like imagine a person is like a beaker and you have this genetic point of a line along the beaker where if you have enough events and it gets you past that line, you're now at risk for like mental health issues, right? Hello. You ready to die? Kyla, if you want to tell me something I'm, you think I'm wrong about, go for it. Come in, okay? It's not about you being wrong. It's not about me saying, I'm not saying destiny, it sounds like you're saying X, which is wrong. It's what it, what's really being communicated is destiny. It sounds like you are somebody who would be saying X, right? Of course, <laughs> okay. when I'm speaking, it's like. Thanks for validating my feelings, okay? Doesn't make me feel any better, but thanks, okay. I know it you doesn't make a... you feel any better, sure. but I, I think like diffusing with humor is cringe, all right? <laughs> Me? <laughs> no shot. Mm. Toxic nah, male right now. nah, mm. no shot. Mm. Not me. I would never uh -oh. do that. Uh oh, Ooh, that Oof. sounds like someone has a problem confronting Oof. feelings and emotions, and they just try to use humor to get out of it until the other person leaves the call. <laughs> Been yeah, fun, Kyla. Sure See you. Talk to you later, buddy. <laughs> See you later. So again, and maybe I misunderstood your initial point in the conversation, and that's my bad. But I felt like it's it's a much more nuanced, and I felt like you were kind of hoping for a specific answer. I'm not hoping for I anything. I think that questioning it, period, triggers a lot of people because there's like an, an expected response where it has to be universally reinforcing whatever the current, I guess, like pop view is of everything. Like one of your characterizations, what I said was insane. You said that like yeah. Destiny seems to think that a woman that dresses promiscuously likes to get not even in a billion years. <laughs> Did I say anything even remotely similar to that? Saying, no, I am saying that your argument was that if a conservative woman or a promiscuous woman gets the promiscuous woman would have a better time of it. And I said, no, I feel like if she's traumatized, she's traumatized. Being promiscuous doesn't now allow me to have less trauma with my that's no, a ridiculous I'm not saying that. You're, I'm you're not saying, saying that. that regardless of your background is always going to have the same level no, of bad response. To I did a woman. not say that. Okay, you literally said I lit it. No, I literally just said some people get and it doesn't traumatize them. Yeah. There's like a, either a miscommunication or something's going wrong in the way we're having the conversation. Is Kyla available? Girl, do you want to talk to me, girl? Um, damn, I really wish Steven was in this call. I think, I think a lot of what was happening was like bad language being used. So a lot of ideas were getting miscommunicated, right? Because what... Steven is talking about is actually called protective factors, right? He's talking about factors that are in a person's life around a trauma that are going to make them either like a little bit more resilient Ooh, or a little hold bit Hold on, more, Kyla, I lost you. That are either going to... Uh, make a person more resilient in the face of a trauma versus yeah. a little bit more like sensitive and possibly like uh, experience like a greater level of distress after the trauma, right? Sure. So we're talking about things like, what about the social zeitgeist around sex, right? He's... What he's really talking about in how I'm hearing it is protective factors around mm -hmm. um, because what we do know with trauma, uh, this is, I'm not an expert in trauma, just to be clear. This is just from the data I have read. So I could be wrong. There's somebody who's probably more informed. Just make sure that the person that you're talking to is informed on data, mm -hmm. their opinion. So I'll, I'll caveat that heavily, but my understanding is like a large portion, when I look at things like sexual assault, right? Like when I look at my own, because I had like a childhood sexual assault. Mm. I don't understand like why, because I have a lot of friends who have been assaulted as adults, especially. And the experience that we've had with our sexual assault is so different. Mm. In many ways, I think because like, so my childhood sexual assault occurred before I could remember. I was like two years old. So I have no memories of it at all. Uh, I didn't even know what had happened until I was like 21. And it like explained why I was having panic attacks around wow. men. Right? And that was really distressing, obviously, for me uh, when I like realized it. But when I talk to like my friends, like I've had friends going to parties and been raped and stuff like that. I think there's something different that occurs when like there's the psychological elements going on, right? Um, and so I think the psychological elements are really hard to talk about because we always want to be careful to like not dismiss anyone's experience of trauma. And yet at the same time, there are protective factors and risk factors that are going to increase or decrease the likelihood of the extent to which the trauma debilitates you uh, mm -hmm. for like ha for how long it will and to what extent it does, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because no one I, like no one wants to sound like they're saying rape good uh, or rape not so bad for these yeah. people. And I don't yeah. think Stephen's saying that. I really don't. I wasn't hearing that. I'm hearing bad language communication 
and probably a little bit of like he's trying to talk exclusively about the logic while you're trying to explain like the emotional landscape. I just disagree on that premise. Conservative women I know dealt with their rapes a lot better because it was like survival of the fittest versus promiscuous. Like that's what I'm saying. Every group has their own lived experience. Why are we assuming that promiscuous or liberated people have more tools dealing with assault? I think basically the presumption is so it's it shouldn't be conservative at all. It should be sexually repressed people, people with high levels of sexual shame. Well, that's and not very it, how common is that in the world now? It, I guess in like from my background in like at least like white Christian land, super high, super, well, super high. Like, well, that was a mean? really big part of my friend's trauma around her rape was that she was also Christian. So she's like, so now I'm in pure now and I'm like bad and dirty. Totally. Yes. Yeah. I know those bubbles for sure. Yeah. Um, I want to know how prevalent they are because like what I because sexually liberated women are also in the modern world. We didn't exactly yes. exist 60 years ago. Yes. So why would we have tools all of a sudden that our mothers didn't have? I, I think the key is um, there's no because I think the main tools here's the thing. I think part of the issue is that probably whether you have sh shame around sex, it probably correlates I would guess a little bit with the extent to which you have like resiliency against like a sexual trauma, but it's probably way less important than things like a social support network, right? So in the case of a lot of these conservative women, for example, if they're really ingrained into their church, while yeah. they might have like high levels of sexual shame, they might have more importantly, really high levels of social connectedness. And therefore like we're seeing a different effect. And so the problem is that mm. like we're, what we're talking about is multiple factors that correlate and contribute to the resiliency, like the protective factors that contribute to how somebody manages distressing events. And I suspect that like sexual shame is probably something that contributes to some degree, at least yeah. in talking with victims in my personal life. For sure. That has been really common language. Mm. But I also think that like while that's probably really important and that's the thing that they're pointing to as their feeling of shame, I wonder how they would feel if they didn't have me and other friends. What would their mm. language sound like if they had no one to turn to or the yeah. people that they did turn to tried to say like, what do you mean? Like, I thought you were having fun. Like, you just don't know what sex is, right? Yeah. Um, like those type of response. Oh, yeah. Because all okay. of this, a lot <laughs> of these protective factors and resilience factors are kind of about how much like psychological mind fucking happens after the distressing event particularly right yeah okay here's a question i want to know what you think because i don't identify as somebody who ever had sex sexual shame mm. uh, people ask me about it all the time and i just don't know how to explain what it is because i don't think i've experienced it um yeah. i had sex after i left my parents house i was a secularist i was an atheist when i had sex for the first time i always consented to all my sexual partners except for the assaults i had a really good i've had great sexual partners i've had all good instances of sex consensually i've ever had was great um i'm very liberated with my body i worked really hard to be comfortable in my body so when i was assaulted my shame came from my inability to fight back not because i got penetrated yeah. mm -hmm. right but it did feel like they were inside my head when it was happening, like they were taking needles to my head and giving me like a lobotomy or something. Is that the right word? A lobotomy? Right. But right? the psychological, like this, this is, I think what Steven, from my understanding, because him and I talked a little bit about this yesterday. I didn't actually know you guys had had this conversation, but when I was talking with Steven, my understanding is he's focusing on how does our society respond to these events and how does that impact the actual effect that the events have on you? Right. Because Mm -hmm. depending on the way people react to the situation did you move away from your mic girly or am i hearing you less um let me see if i i thought i had one mic on maybe it's swapped to a different one ah yeah and it's using the wrong mic that's okay why. um i'll just move back towards it there we go better yes but it's okay. okay sorry about that um i got distracted what was your question <laughs> um Fuck. You said you were talking to Steven and he was more I just don't like being put into the the category of like you're fighting with your emotions when I'm like, well, from everything I've read and from my understanding of like even looking up like PTSD statistics, uh, people have different tools for different things, but pain levels are the same, but the why is different. So yes. pain levels are the same, but the why is different. And Steven is making the argument that sexually liberated people would have less pain. But why? I, is he saying less physical pain or less emotional pain? I think emotional pain, right? I don't know. He just clarified on stream again, but like, that's the problem. Is he, why would promiscuity or like sexually liberation matter in a rape? Um, 
again, because he's talking about the psychological effects afterwards. So I don't think he's saying in the middle of a rape, nobody's going like, man, this is awful, but good thing. I don't think sex is a bad thing, right? Nobody's thinking yeah. that. They're thinking, okay. oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Or they are freezing and they're thinking nothing at all. They're just yeah. disassociating, right? Yeah. What? So like the event itself, I think is going to have a lot of trauma, particularly on your body, right? So you're going to mm. notice hypervigilance in that person afterwards. You're going to notice things like panic attacks. This is where I suspect like part of my trauma, like effects are most relevant. Like I don't have the psychological trauma associated with it. I don't remember. And I was two, so I don't, I didn't talk to anyone about it and get like dismissed or anything like that. Cause I was of two, I, I couldn't. And so a lot of ways, most of my trauma effects was things like vaginismus or panic attacks mm. when people touched me, high levels of hypervigilance, right? Tons of tension in my body. And so I suspect like the physical event itself probably has that ramification. Mm. But a lot of people are like, that really sucks, right? That for victims, that's awful. But the next really awful thing is this so, because humans really like, really care about belongingness. Yeah. And so when you have a community that comes around you and dismisses you or like treats it like it's shameful, or even if they don't treat mm. it, but you're in a community that's already views sex as shameful. Um, and so you, as you come out of the event, right, the day after when you're talking to people and they say things like, what if you tell your friend, say you orgasmed in the midst of the rape, right? And you're talking to your friend and they say that, and then they get this look over their face, or they like mm. are clearly a little bit disgusted with you. Like imagine like the gut dropping experience of that. For so, sure. Like, I think in many ways, like maybe I'm still manning Stephen too much, but it sounded like him and I agreed that like when we're talking about like sexual assault specifically, and I would say, I'm going to be honest, I think when we're talking about all trauma, our society has a really unsophisticated way of responding to it where we're very, very insensitive to like specifically the psychological aspects that impact a person immediately after the event has occurred. Mm. Like, how are you responding? Mm -hmm. How are people responding to you? What type of questions are they asking, right? This is why if you go to the police, no matter what, it's awful because they have to ask you questions that when you're a survivor and you're questioning your validity yeah. of your story, even though they're just asking you questions of good faith, it feels like they're questioning For sure. your story. Uh, for sure. Yeah. I See, the problem is like, I do agree with you guys, but I just don't think it's the overall story. Like, I think it's sounding too much like, because, you know, the the stereotype of, like, some of the conservative bubbles is, like, if you're on OnlyFans, you do deserve to be raped because you're putting your body out there. Why do you care about rape if you're putting your body out there? Because they're thinking the same thing. It wouldn't impact you the same as a good girl who's never wanted sex. Right. And that's true that the aftermath of the rape might be different. But the actual initial trauma from just the rape, I think the pain levels are equal. I don't know why we're playing the game of who suffers more when, like, everyone is going to suffer more. Like, everyone out there suffers more than us. There is going to be a promiscuous or sexually liberated woman or man who had a harder rape than a moderate, like, a conservative sexually repressed person. Right. And this is where I think the language really broke down. I really don't think... Like, I, I mean, obviously, Stephen might feel differently about this, but I really don't think the language should have said, who's going to get, he was saying, who's, he's not going to say who's going to suffer more. He's saying, who's going to be less traumatized? What I'm hearing, again, maybe I'm still manning too much, is who has more protective factors? Like, who is going to have, like, more protective factors around them after the actual event? And he was saying, in one case, probably people with high levels of sexual shame that's going to be a risk factor for them in in relation to that. But a sexually liberated person, while they might not have that risk factor, they might have a million other risk factors, like a fractured family unit or, yeah. um, you know, they <clears throat> or might no be friends like, or like no, like what if they have no, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, I don't know that anything makes sense in that regard. If like the sex, cause I know so many sexually liberated women who are, who are men who are assaulted. It didn't seem to matter. <laughs> right. Exactly. And so it's like, where he's kind of making like a normative statement about risk factors and protective factors. And to some extent, I would expect that like, I don't know if sexual, so I think he might be missing the mark here. I don't know. And I, again, I haven't seen the data. I haven't seen any good data specifically on sexual liberation and whatnot. I see mostly self-reports on it, mm. which I'm like, I don't know how much I care about somebody saying that because how you and I both know there's a lot of people who feel sexually liberated who are right. mostly like still dealing with their sexual shame they're just yes. like dealing with it by trying to like put on the facade of being opposite right 100 
So it, even the studies I've seen, I don't know how much I care, but when I think about it, I don't know if sexual liberation specifically is a protective factor as much as sexual repression and shame is a risk factor. I agree with that. Okay. That's, That's what I, I agree with. It. That's what I agree with. I don't think, because what it does in the mind of the listener, and I'm just trying to be like careful with language here, is that it gives less sympathy and empathy to the, to the sexually liberated person as if it's not as bad. And I think that's super dangerous because not all sexually liberated people have resources or they also like maybe they're like me where they, they suffer from toxic masculinity and they suffer from like, um, I never need help. I'm fine. Everything's fine. But mm. obviously, like I still deal with it to this day. And so it is one of those things where I just want there to be a clarification because the worry is that, again, everyone's different and I want to accept everyone from where they come from. But this is the reason why I think I don't want to give I want to give him the benefit of the doubt of being a good person, which I don't have to do. I know he's a good person. Right. But good people don't always protect the people in their lives the way they could. Right. Especially, and so like I said, there's such bad Girl, did you walk all the way to Antarctica? Oh fuck. You're so far away. You are literally on the other side of the universe. <laughs> Forgetting which mic. I, usually, when I have my camera on, it reminds me to stay by this mic. But oh. I usually use my headset mic, and I'm walking around thinking I have it. I did <laughs> come back from Antarctica. I can report the penguins are happy still. Yeah, I'm so glad. So yeah, of <sighs> course Stephen's a good person. I just right. like again, a lot of people were confused by his statements because it sounded again. So okay, that's what I always say. Like the why and how we come from an angle matters. So I always want to come from everyone suffers. Suffering is valid, but let's talk mm -hmm. about in your personal life how to be grateful for certain things. Like maybe a sexually liberated person can be grateful for like access to support groups, right. and then. That's that's gratefulness and humility, and that's beautiful. But none of that negates the pain and trauma that people endure. Right. And I, I genuinely, when listening to Stephen, I don't think he was trying to say that they're not getting traumatized at all. I could be wrong. I don't want to put words in his mouth. But when I was listening to it, I was listening to somebody who's like probably He's, not I, super trauma-informed on language specifically, yeah. trying to describe risk factors and protective factors. Do you think they're less traumatized? I don't know. I don't know because the issue is like, it's really hard to quantify like less and more traumatized because as you kind of said, two people with very like, have you heard of the, oh man, I'm going to be used. Have you ever heard of like uh, the uh, diathesis stress model of uh, like mental health? No. Okay. Big word. Doesn't really matter. It's basically like, imagine a person is like a beaker. And you have this genetic point of a line along the beaker where if you have enough events and it gets you past that line, you're now at risk for like mental health issues, right? And everyone's kind of set point is different. Some people have personality differences, right? Some people are very, like some babies, you can test like stimuli reaction. Some babies, when you show like novel stimuli to, they get really excited mm -hmm. and they want to touch it. Other babies just fucking scream. They hate it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'd, be, I'd be interested to know like how much is that proclivity a protective factor, a risk factor for how you handle distressing events at large. But the issue when we're talking about like trauma itself as an individual, we're always having to navigate like individual experiences where an event that traumatizes Cindy, if it identically happened to Anne, Anne might be like, yeah, it wasn't a big deal. Where exactly. Cindy might be like, that shattered my world. Because in exactly. a lot of, because this is the, this is kind of like the, the element of trauma that's as you said, like subjective, it's not arbitrary, which is that mm. what seems to traumatize people specifically is when they feel helpless and it shatters their expectations of the world. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of times in the cases of rape, we have, especially penetrative rape. It seemed <clears throat> like I could be wrong. A lot of guys that I talked to, they're like, yeah, like if I got raped on my dick, like it would suck. And I'm like, well, what if it happened to like your asshole? Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, oh my God, that's awful, right? There seems to be something. Literally, that was all of Destiny's Reddit. They're like, right. yeah, if I was raped by a woman, no big deal. But wait, a man? No, nah, I'll take the jumped. I'll get jumped instead. And that's right. the point. The point is, is that we're all having different conversations. Yes. Because when I say rape, I don't mean stealthing. Even though it's sexual assault, right? So right. there's like a conversation or some people consider their molestations rapes and I don't. So like we're having different conversations, but ultimately I just, everyone experiences it differently and it's 
I don't want to play that game because again, someone is always going to suffer more than you. But of course, like, I don't know. Like I, I just don't, like, how do you explain to somebody, like, do you relate to that idea of, um, like genuinely, if somebody's like, would you like to be raped again? Or would you like to lose your pinky finger? What do I need a pinky finger for? I, I'm not sure how much I, re- I, I don't know. I don't know what I think about that. Do you know what I'm um, saying? Like that was the conversation we ended up all having though. And that's the right. problem is of course it's going to be different based off the people. There's not a wrong or right answer. You can't say like, Brittany's crazy for not wanting to get raped again. Why? Do you, have you had it? It's awful. Like for me, something I've never had before would be less traumatizing than something I know is traumatizing. Right. And see how I'm choosing my consent is being considered so I can choose violence over rape. Right. So I don't right. know if people are understanding when we're having these conversations. Of course, it's going to be subjective. If if people want to get raped versus beat up, great. But that doesn't mean that one person is bad or good. It's just like there was a lot of um, that's insane. That's crazy. This is damaged people. But the thing is, is like if you've never been raped, of course, it doesn't sound that bad if you think it's just like some hot woman is going to take advantage of you in a locker room. Right. And I guess I think one thing that is important in this conversation, which is like, how does our society treat each of these events, right? Like in the mm-hmm. case of a physical assault, I don't think anyone would really question you on it because nope. it's like pretty I could give GoFundMe, girl. Happened. I could right. raise a GoFundMe and people yeah. would give me money. If I tried to raise GoFundMe for my rape, uh, very specific groups would only fund me. Right. And so then it's like, okay, like I think one part that's interesting in this is like, if why are we picking one over the other? And I think like something that's probably missing in this conversation is like, because like, being socially rejected and experiencing like that level of like psychological mind fucking afterwards mm. is really, really, really distressing. Um, like a lot, and this is why a lot of people who have been, who've experienced both, like when you talk to people who've experienced physical and sexual abuse, a lot of them are like, I would take being physically abused every single time. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. Mm. It's such a sophisticated topic to talk yeah. about. And I think that we really don't have the language or understanding to do it well. Even like when I like listen to like sometimes like trauma specialists, like it feels like all we want to do is be like, yes, queen. Yes, girl. And it's like the benefit, like when I first realized that I had had like this sexual assault history, mm. I am so glad that my friends didn't respond by going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're traumatized. You're a victim. Because I I don't know what that effect of, that would have had on me, but I don't think it would have been good for me. Instead, my friend just like heard me out and allowed me to label the event. Yes. And she was like, how do you feel about it? What was yes. that experience like for you? At no point did she offer me a label. And I think in a large part, like when I think about like, because I was like 21 when this happened and uh, it was like in a pretty distressing event. And then I went to a gynecologist and there was like some scarring and like severe, severe vaginismus. And I was like, oh, okay. Like all the pieces kind of came together slowly. I'm so glad that I had a friend that was willing to just give me the space to experience the event in the way that I was ready to. Yeah. Whereas I think a lot of time when people talk about like certain traumas, we just kind of want to like yes queen them. And like, I'm Mm. concerned that like we, we yes queen people into like worse states essentially. Like that would be like yeah, one for sure I have about the trauma culture. Okay, and, can I say yeah. something though? From my experience, I get it equally. So the conservatives don't believe it happens and the progressives think you have to be traumatized. Right. And I'm like, fuck both of you. I just right. want a middle ground where I can just actually be honest about how I felt about it. Right, yeah. But that's the problem is like when you are, it doesn't matter. Even Steven's audience were ranking my rape in right. comments. So it doesn't matter. Who you talk to, everyone's going to have a preference and a bias to move you in a direction of answer about what is more, what is better and how you should handle it and what should count as rape and all these things, which is why I think it's only a matter to the individual and the medical professionals they're working with. I honestly worked on my rape alone, basically. I went to some survival groups and they helped, but eventually I had to stop going to them because they were so wonderfully inclusive, male appearing people showed up and it would trigger my PTSD. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even find a safe space in most rape um, places because they were too busy fighting over whether or not it should be gender inclusive. And it was so frustrating. I was like, okay, I just need to talk to my medical professionals at this point. So that's what I did. I relied not on the bubbles, not the support of my family or friends. I mean, yes, I had them, but I didn't really need them to help me with the bulk of my trauma. I needed a professional who explained to me how my brain works and why my body is feeling this way so I could deal with it. Because honestly, who deals with our, our PTSD on a daily basis except for us? 
So I have to deal with it. It's my responsibility. Again, just like my borderline that I didn't ask for. So I understand this. I just feel like sometimes we have an expectation of society without realizing we are a part of the problem. Destiny's yes. words would trigger me. Right. right? If I date, if I was with Destiny, that would be very unnerving for me to hear from a sexual partner. Because right. he's not putting an onus. He's not putting enough emphasis on protecting both people. He's more sympathetic to one than the other. And that's what it appears as. I'm not saying that's what it is factually. I'm saying I would need somebody who is more, even friends. I've had friends who literally have been like, well, didn't you say your rape was kind of your choice? And I'm like, okay, wow. When I told you that story, you heard the complete wrong message. Right. So I think you have to have the right people to actually humanize you, hold you accountable, because a lot of our rapes, especially at parties, could be avoided by not going to certain parties. And at the same time, I, I don't know that, right? Because all of the, the, a lot of the time we know the people who rape us. Right. So it's a lot. Of, there's a lot here. I'm just saying I'm open to any possibility being true, but I don't like the generalizations because people get lost in the weeds that way. Yes. I would have gotten lost in the weeds that way. If I got yes girled or rejected, I had to tell both of those bubbles to shut the fuck up and let me work with a singular other person. Yeah. So then I guess my question would be is how do we as a society, because as a society, we don't really have the capacity for this high resolution, like um nuance right like i would say we don't take normative claims about like protective and risk factors and apply them to an individual right we talk to the individual and let them ex explore it themselves right mm -hmm. but when we're talking as a society about this um right i i wonder for example i don't know how you feel about this but there's oftentimes like cer certain like claims that get made particularly in like public uh social media domains and stuff that right. feel like, I, I feel strange about them where I'm like, obviously, if you were this distressed, that matters to me. Um, but the, the like event that you're describing, like it, it, it is absolutely like a sexually like, like not good event, but yeah. it's really hard for me to apply the same language versus somebody who's like waking up with a dick inside them or is like too drunk to consent or like, like yeah, more for like sure. clear cut situations. And so I'm empathetic to both, but I think a lot of times our society kind of tries to like low resolution, treat them all the same. Yes. Um, which I know for me, I sometimes find frustrating. And that's where I think like the ranking of trauma specifically comes in because it's like, well, there's a really big difference between like somebody who's like pinned down, right? A violent aggravated yeah. assault versus yeah. somebody where they were drunk and woke up versus somebody who was stealth versus somebody like, and they're all bad. Like nobody mm. should be saying that they're good, <clears throat> but how do we as a society talk about these things? Because it mm. like, especially criminologically, they necessarily have to get treated differently, right? Like they're mm. going to result in different charges, different views yeah. admitted to them. Okay. So just for the record, my work doesn't care about society. Right. Because I can't. I literally, I've, society has never helped me. Society has never embraced me. Society has never been the reason I've been successful. Mm -hmm. It has always been individual bubbles, small groups, individuals, myself. So my work is predicated on not relying on society. Right. Because society takes too long to problem solve, but I appreciate its efforts. So I read a book about a feminist once. Oh, I can't remember her name. She's an English. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. I watched an interview of her. She's an English feminist. She was brutally raped at a party. And she was like, oh, you know, what are you going to do? And I was like, damn. Like the way she reacted to it is kind of the point is that I want to have her be valid and me be valid. I want the person who was molested at a store just by someone touching their boob. If they felt they were horrified by that. I want that to be as valid as anything else in their own personal experience. And then when the law comes in and all that stuff, sure, there can be a hierarchy. I'm all about tier systems. Let's go. But again, when we're just talking about individual experiences, it's it's hard to even um, account for society because like we're all born in different religious bubbles and cities inside cities inside cities. So I, I don't have those solutions if I'm being honest, but I want to validate everyone's possible experience because the moment we make it hierarchical, we like lose our empathy and sympathy for people's like lived experience. Now, are we obligated as individuals or societies to feel mm. sad for everyone? No. Right. Because there are some people I know who I don't even know if I believe their stories. Yes. But that's okay. the thing. I'm not obligated to believe their stories, but I'm also not a person who would go and say, like, I'm very cautious about how I, yes. you know what I'm saying? Okay. I think I figured out where you and <clears throat> Destiny's conversation broke down then. Destiny is talking only about society. 
Oh, well, yeah, I don't fucking know. I don't right. Know and fuck. the personal experiences can't be validated equally on a societal level because we live in a society with like uh, institutions and systems that respond to these things at a societal level. So I think that's a large portion of where yeah, probably. I could be wrong. But yeah. Yeah, because obviously, like, if I cared about, like, I can't, I've tried to work with society. It just, I don't make any leeway. I help a lot more people if I work individually. Mm -hmm. So obviously, yes, I, I, my work is predicated on the individual. How does the individual, like, regardless of how society treats you, how do you get through this trauma? Mm -hmm. Because society will probably yes man you into more trauma or no man you into more trauma. Mm -hmm. And so you have to find a way through yourself. And so I'm very in the survival, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, but not the conservative way, the progressive yeah. way, which yeah. means like fight the fucking system and fuck the system. But the system, yeah, I, I, that's why I, I'm so excited to get like a professional here who like deals with trauma victims directly. That's why I loved my therapist, Kyla, because mm. she legit was like, yeah, of course you want to kill yourself. Life sucks. I was like, thank you. She goes, your life is really hard. I was like, yeah, it's pretty hard, but you know, it's okay. Like, it's fine. I have all these things. She goes, stop. Stop saying it's fine when you're allowed to say it sucks, but you're still managing because you're like you're a badass. Yes, but it still sucks. And you still have to hold yourself accountable. Like she did everything. She cheered me on. She held me accountable and she made me go apologize to people I hurt. Right. Yes. Like she did all of it. It was perfect. But yes. society to ask that from society, girl. Right. And so then the question is that I think probably Stephen has is as a society, can we have a low resolution zeitgeist that's a little bit better than it is now? Um, and I would like to believe that we can. I don't know yeah. what it specifically would be because I think like the idea of like all jobs are equal and you just like treat them all the same is like, right. the cons I think part of why like we'll get the pushback on the opposite side is because it's like, that's such a like ineffective and untrue statement. Right. Whereas instead like uh, trust, but verify uh, is like a little bit of a better statement versus like believe all women is probably like yes. not the best kind right, of no. way, especially because it's very exclusive. Because as if people don't women. lie, right. as if people exactly, don't lie, exactly, like so exactly. stupid. No, I absolutely, obviously, I think that's all bullshit. Like, but I don't like that Stephen was like Brittany's too close to the subject. I was like, bro, we're having two different conversations. I feel like we are, and they're like, no, and I'm like, okay. And then now I'm realizing, like, okay, if we're talking about society versus the individual, then I literally society. I don't believe it fixes itself. I believe bubbles contribute to the larger bubble but i think all the bubbles want different things it will never happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but sure low low resolution or whatever sure go for it have fun but yeah i just i'm focused on how we treat people individually in our own lives and how our trauma manifests and then how a lot of us call it a cope or i don't have any trauma and it's like okay like i don't know what that means you know what i mean because as a society our trauma is obviously clear right yeah. So maybe it starts with the individual a little bit, but maybe that's too conservative of a talking point, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, okay, uh, this was super okay. helpful. Do you have any other thoughts, though? I'm not pushing you off, but... No, no, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, I just, like, okay. when I was listening to you guys, I was like, oh, we're talking past each other. Like, Yeah, oh, no. yeah, and I don't want to do that either, but yeah, so yeah. okay, when I talk to Steven, I should ask him if we're talking about society or individuals. Yeah, I think that would probably be helpful, although Steven now says that he wants me to come on and fight him, so I guess... I guess stay tuned to find out if I misquoted him. So oh, if I was wrong. To, are you going to go on a wanna... show? Because we'll listen in. We'll watch. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go chat to him. Oh, now. girl. We'll <laughs> see you in a few minutes. Get him, girl. Just kidding. Have fun. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, bye. I just like okay. when I was listening to you guys, I was like, oh, we're talking past each other. Like, yeah, oh, no. yeah. And I don't want to do that either. But yeah. So, yeah. okay. When I talk to Steven, I should ask him if we're talking about society or individuals. Yeah, I think that would probably be helpful. Although Stephen now says that he wants me to come on and fight him, so I guess, I guess, stay tuned to find out if I misquoted him. So oh, if I was to, wrong, are you gonna go on a show? Because we'll listen in, we'll watch. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go chat. To him oh, now. girl, we'll see you in a. Hello. You ready to die? Yeah, I'm okay. ready to die. Okay, I'm I, now. Did I put words in your mouth? I feel like no, I, it's okay. I, I've just decided yet. to embrace it. I'm pro rape. Okay, so let's get that out of the way initially. Okay, hey, understand? Shut up. Okay, no, you're not. Shut now that we've up. got that out of the way, okay, I'm gonna have a more <laughs> frank conversation about this. Okay, are you ready? Okay. okay. Yeah. Society has been fucking poisoned with the inability to ever understand at scale a negative event that somebody goes through, okay? It might be uh, a child hearing something in a classroom and having a fucking emotional breakdown and running to Twitter about it. Or it might be somebody inappropriately touching you and then having the same response, apparently, as you would to like a full-on fucking horrible gang rape sexual assault, okay? This is not good for a variety of reasons, okay? So here's one thing, okay, that I want to push you on that I know that you are correct, okay? 
We have to be able to rank trauma. You understand that, right? As a diagnostician, maybe not professionally, but like you have to be able to get an assessment of where somebody's at with a traumatic response. Nobody would come in and go like, hey, I think my trauma is destroying my life. Like I might need help with this. And you would go, well, actually, all of it is subjective and anybody could respond in anything to any way. And I don't want to rank your trauma. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? Okay, I'm going to back us up like two steps. Go. A major reason you and Brittany were misunderstanding is because she's never talking about society. She's always talking about how she as an individual interacts with society. That's not true. She concepts. was talking about society because she was talking about conservative women and promiscuous women and everything. She was talking about society. But ignore that. I don't care about that. I'm asking you not now. Not in the way you are because you're she, talking no, about systems. She was. To get t so I want you to answer my question, okay? Okay. So the question Being is, able to rank and understand the badness of somebody's trauma is pretty fucking yes. important from a yes, correct? And she, yes, she okay. agreed with me by the end. Uh, yeah, this she agreed like, with you, I know. And you said every single fucking thing I said. But I don't care about that now, okay? Now I'm just okay. fighting you, okay? I'm just what do you sure think was the difference? What do you think was the difference? <clears throat> the difference is that I'm a man. And in her mind, all I'm saying over and over again is you deserve to be raped and your response is your fault and you should have done something better about it. Because having these kinds of conversations are impossible. The only thing people want to hear is your experience was the worst thing that could ever happen in the world and all experiences like this are the worst thing that can ever happen in the world and any other type of experience we can't even think of saying that one was better or worse than the other. i can't even rank them it's a blah 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 a bunch of silliness but i understand it but it's like a personal engagement with it where it's like this really bothers me and it sounds like you're just like blaming me on everything that's what that's what the conversations are if it's anything besides relentless affirmation that's what it feels like and i heard her say things in that like i want these two different types of traumas to be valid of course every type of trauma can be valid i've never said anything otherwise but when i hear statements like that what i'm hearing is somebody just looking for like affirmation and and the thing that especially bothers me about this is if I was having a personal conversation with somebody and they felt like I wasn't hearing or seeing them, that is totally fine if they feel like I'm being insensitive. But people are jumping into this conversation that I'm already having on stream. I'm already having a conversation about like, is it hierarchical? What's causing people to have traumatic responses? And she was one of the people that jumped in and wanted to talk about it. To jump in and say, well, I felt like it wasn't being insensitive to me. It's like, you entered this conversation that I was having. I'm not here to cater to your personal things about it. You wanted to be a part of the conversation that I was already having. If you wanted to dictate or change the terms of that conversation or say hey i've got a personal experience with this could you like be a little bit sensitive to something that's totally fine i can understand that but you can't jump into my conversation and then start demanding that i make a whole bunch of like i need to cater to you and this and this and this and this otherwise i'm being like an insensitive or hateful person i don't think that's fair i think that's i think that's wrong sure and i i, I suspect like a large i suspect that britney jumped in thinking that she was good to have the conversation at an ideological level specifically mm -hmm. and the problem is that like she even when she's talking about like groups like bubbles she's not talking about society in the way you are because like when i'm thinking about ranking trauma i'm thinking about diagno diagnostics i'm talking about federal crimes i'm talking about like legislature policy making and like institutional ranking of traumas that is necessary for like we need to figure out whether aggravated rape is worse than like molestation like touching somebody's breast because obviously they need to have like different charges that are applied to them mm -hmm. right the issue is that when she's talking about like conservative women, even when it's like broadband and generalized like that, she's still talking about like the individual person. Um, yeah, but I, at some point when you're making statements like, and she literally says in the conversation, when you're making statements like anybody can experience anything in any way, it's like, what are we talking about right now? Like, <laughs> do like, you think that a like a therapist or somebody like who is responding to another individual on like an individual level who is a rape victim? That you would that they would talk to Brittany in the way that you were talking about rape. No, of course not. Okay, Brittany thinks the most important thing is connecting with the individual. But you okay, that's fine. Society. But I, I agree with that. I think in connecting with the individual is important. But I'm not having a one-on-one -on -one therapy session. I'm, I'm having a broader conversation about like like what what are protective factors for people in in, in coming out of like adverse sexual scenarios or rapes without being as like negatively impacted like are there protective factors are there risk factors that's an interesting question to me and i don't think we it's very 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 hard to explore it and it's very hard to know what the answer is but it's but, but that type of question is very interesting to me and it was relevant to another video i think they were watching whatever so that's what the conversation was it wasn't like mm -hmm. what is the most sensitive way that i can approach your particular assault and have that conversation with you that's like a that's a totally separate almost unrelated conversation sure i i agree the issue is that like that was an unvoiced negotiation that probably need to be stated and i would agree that probably britney needed to spearhead it when she was like noticing these things i think that that's all super fair 
all I'm speaking to is like why the disconnect was happening to such a high level. Sure, I, um, I think I agree with that, right? Yeah, okay. but then it that's also, it feels, it feels, to. I think that that's a tall ask of me because it puts me in an awkward spot where I've got to like, damn, somebody's like, are you okay to have this I conversation? I already said Britney should have spearheaded it. Sure, I okay. I said Britney should have spearheaded it, Gotcha, right? I think okay. that she should have. And I think like looking back, now that she realizes, like she just said, she's like, oh, okay. So when I talk to Steven, I need to say, are we talking about individuals or are we talking about society? And I was like, yes, right? <laughs> she needs to clarify with you specifically, what are we talking about here, right? Because I imagine if you were in Britney's shoes and she was talking about the individual, you wouldn't recommend going to an individual being like, yeah, but are you sexually liberated? So like, isn't that a protective factor? Of for course you? not, yeah, well, obviously. Of course not, obviously, right? But the <clears throat> issue is that like, she was hearing it through that lens and she wasn't really jumping into like society stuff. Cause she just like, in her head, she's like, I don't give a fuck about society at all because society means a very, very restricted thing to her. Sure, I yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I think that was essentially my takeaway that she felt like I was like personally demeaning her experience of telling her that she needed to get over it or something, which is probably how yes. it, I guess it would have come up. But again, it's it's the same as jumping into somebody giving financial advice and then you come and you ask a couple questions about like IRAs that you're curious about and then you like go personally like do all of these things because you thought they were talking about you. Like it, was, it wasn't it wasn't the conversation, I guess, which is frustrating. Um, right. Okay. Is there, <clears throat> I don't think I'm wrong about anything I've said so far. I think that there are risk factors and there are protective factors that make it more or less likely for you to be traumatized. <laughs> you like that language, hey? Um, yeah, sure, because I want to use this because you said the fucking retarded thing of like, oh, he's not trauma informed. I don't think I've said anything that contradicts any research I've read ever. I'm treading lightly in the conversation, but I keep hearing these phrases about it. The body keeps score, the body, blah, 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 bullshit. I don't think that trauma exists in the vacuum of your body. If you've ever seen anything that disagrees with that or anything that point, I pray to you to please fucking link me because everything I've seen seems to be to the contrary. That trauma and trauma responses, save for like the most extraordinary things, like being extendedly fucking torture gang rape. Order. But for like, in, in, for a lot of crazy stuff, a lot of it is heavily mediated by the society that you're in. That you're, whether or not you're religious, the type of upbringing you have, the type of adverse events you have as a child, your fucking genes, that all of these things heavily play into the likelihood of you being traumatized. And I keep hearing this repeated thing, the body keeps score, the body keeps score. Like that's somehow supposed to handle it all. Like, well, actually, no, every single body has like a default set of like response to trauma. I don't think that's true at all. Tell me if I'm right or wrong or, or God, walk me down that path. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I, I'm getting frustrated because I'm having multiple people, I, women, do this thing with email. Like, I don't think you know the research. I'm like, I don't know the research. I've read tons of articles on this shit, and I've never seen anything. That's why I have the opinion that I do. But then people think, say things like, "Oh, you haven't seen the research." I'm like, "Well, have you read these seven books?" I was like, "No, but I don't think you have either." Link me a paragraph. Link me a section. Give me a chapter to read. I've never, ever, ever in my life seen anything that's contradicted anything that I'm saying ever. And I've always heard things that are contradicting the other things. I'm like, "Oh no, everybody has. Everybody can have any response and subjective and ubiquitous responses to trauma." Blah blah blah. I've never seen anything to support that ever. Okay. All I've seen okay. always is that trauma is complicated, responses are complicated, we don't even know why some people get traumatized some people don't. Go ahead, cut me off, go. Sorry, go okay. ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna start with, do you know what the limbic system is? Um, yes, what about it? Hormones and all that good shit? Yeah, we kind of like, really reductively, it's like the emotion center, it's yeah. not exclusively, but it, okay. The limbic system doesn't give a fuck about society. The limbic system cares about the body, right? It cares about your personal experience. And what Brittany is trying to say is like, even when you're talking at like a broadband level, it's not that she's like just worried about you demeaning her experience specifically. It's that a victim of trauma will hear that and their limbic system will react necessarily because the, the limbic system is not very good at parsing these things apart, right? And so what she's trying to say is like, she doesn't want you to use language that is going to cause victims of trauma to experience like greater dismissal because particularly in the case of sexual assault like one of the most common things that every sexual assault victim will say is typically some form of victim blaming they're going to question themselves maximally um how i could have done more i should have done more you know what was i like unironically what was i wearing what did i do to bring this on and then also questions about like was this even real because the limbic system is super super stupid um a lot of people keep talking about like the body what it what's the okay i need to separate these two books there's the bessel van der kolk book which is the one that everyone's referring to which is the body keeps the score which is a really good book in a lot of ways but it's also a really bad book because there's a lot of pseudoscience it's pop it. it's a pop science book i know it is i can just tell yes. by the name of it that it's a pop it's like the five minute body or whatever there's a lot of pop science books where they'll have these like nuggets of true things and then they extrapolate the fuck out of like single case studies or uh, but i mean there might be some things that are true but like uh, if there's a yes. part that's true that's important just cite me the chapter or the paragraph or the study that is citing and then i can go there but and i hate it when people just go oh read this whole book it's like motherfucker i'm not gonna read the whole book you know that and two if you read the book you should be able to cite the part that's important about it right if somebody <laughs> asks me about something that i've read i don't understand when people do this 
Help me understand this, fucking Kyla. Okay? If okay. I read a study or if I read a book or if I see a movie and I go, I really like how this thing was expressed here. Um, I really liked uh, the characterization of fucking uh, nihilism uh, or absurdism or whatever in, in Albert Camus' The Stranger. And somebody's like, oh, well, what did you like about it? I would never in my entire life go, read the book. I would tell you that these are the parts that I appreciated. This is why I appreciate it. This is why I feel the way I do about it. I hate it when people just say, like, read the book because it makes me feel like you haven't read it or you didn't understand it. Sorry, go ahead. Sure. I'm, so I'm, my limbic system say, is highly activated right now. Go ahead. I can tell. I can tell. It's okay. I am a master uh, limbic worker. Oh, okay. hold on. Now you have a master's? Hello. Oh, yeah, I Hello. Do. Hello. President in, Sunday. <laughs> master in the house. Go in ahead. The limbic psychometry. Uh -huh. okay, okay. Go ahead. Limbic craft. Okay. So a, a better book that people, so if people cite you a book, you can cite them back another book. I'll give you this, this weaponry. Okay. Which is a better book about the body and trauma mm -hmm. is Babette Rothschild, The Body Rumors. I brought this up to you sure. yesterday. Sure, yes. Because it's way better. Okay. As far as like individual studies, a lot of these individual studies, so the issue with like- oh, just, trauma, I don't, Real quick thing on that, and then you can keep going. I'm, just, I'm not looking for like ammunition to win a debate. I just want to know the information. I'm just curious what's, yeah. what's true or what's right, but go ahead, yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to map this on in two ways. I'm going to talk about some of the research that I have seen, okay. but just to be clear, I'm obviously not an expert in trauma. Okay. Any means. Um, I'm just laying on the laurels of data. Most of the data on trauma is going to be dominantly self-report, mm -hmm. which is eh, at best, and epidemiological. Okay. What is really compelling to me is longitudinal epidemiological findings on people with trauma. Mm -hmm. And what we find is that they're at extremely high <clears throat> risks for things, I think I mentioned this yesterday, for things like IBS, right? Mm -hmm. They have higher levels of, uh, they develop like- Probably all, probably even rent. cancer, probably all sorts of medical outcomes. It wouldn't surprise me. All yeah. sorts, PCOS, yeah. all mm -hmm. sorts of things. In fact, like IBS and PCOS are in many ways viewed as kind of like trauma related diseases. Interesting, right? okay. So we know, we don't, we don't, if you study the brain, the first thing any neuroscientist will tell you who studied the brain for like eight to 10 years, like way more than I have, is that we know nothing about the brain, sure. right? The more we research it, the less we know because the brain is super flexible. It's neuroplastic. Um, it's very interconnected. Could, There's not like one section very, only yeah. does one thing. Exactly. And yeah, yeah, you yeah. could just chop out a section and then other sections will be like, I'm gonna do that now, right? Like you could rebuild the vestibular system yeah. even if you pull out like 98% of the mm -hmm. like nerves related to it mm -hmm. using like people's tongue. It's fucking crazy. Brains are insane. But what we do know is that like, and this is why, for example, when I talk about my trauma and listening to this whole discourse has actually given me a, bit, a fair bit of insight into like my experience with my childhood sexual abuse, which I have no memories of. I just had body reactions. I have IBS, right? I'm prone to chronic illness. I'm extremely hypervigilant. My, my, my muscles are fucking tight all the time. So I'm very prone to sprains and injuries as well. Um, and I had like panic attacks when people touched me, even though I had no memory of this, right? Mm -hmm. In the case of like adult trauma, or at least post like your hippocampus coming online, you have both the bodily reactions, right? I think I'm a great example of like, in many ways, the bodily effects of the traumatic event itself, mm -hmm. right? Which is things like, high levels of vaginismus and all sorts of stuff that i've already outlined to you sure. but then in the case of somebody who also remembers the event you have all of the psychological trauma that occurs afterwards as well right mm -hmm. and the problem is at the individual level you can't take normative findings and apply them very well right even if i know a whole bunch of risk factors and protective factors it doesn't mean that i can apply that super well and sophisticatedly to an individual to determine the level of trauma that they personally have experienced you sure. can't really know. This is why, like I said to Brittany, you can have Cindy and Anne who experience the exact same thing. They just get their boob touched. Cindy, her entire world falls apart. Anne is like, eh, it's just like another day. Don't really care, right? Mm -hmm. This is why we can have like these different effects. It's in part probably because of risk and protective factors, but also things like personality types and even more fundamental and more kind of like subjective, their psychological expectation of the world, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Step one. Did I answer those, those questions about like body stuff? And you didn't answer whatnot? any question that I didn't already know the answer to. Every single thing you've said, I've already believed, and I'm pretty sure I've stated as much. But go for it. I don't want to give you yep. or anybody else in here a misconception that you said something new to me. I understand all of this, and I and I believe all of this. Yes, keep going okay. if you want. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad. I'm. I'm I'll keep speaking to the choir then. Good. That's good. So That's fine. I think the main area where the breakdown happened is that even when you're talking at a societal level, mm -hmm. individuals hear it and they hear an individual analysis. Now there is a certain level of responsibility on the individual. You shouldn't hear people talking about sociological things and assume that they're talking about your individual experience with 
rape. Right? Yeah. Okay. The issue is that, in my mind, the aesthetic matters too, right? So when you're talking at a sociological level, you want to make sure that the aesthetic that you're coming across with to everyone is an aesthetic that communicates things like, I am in no way trying to say that your personal individual trauma is one way or the other, because you can't comment on it. You don't know. Sure. I think in a lot of ways, what was occurring between you and Brittany is both the, she's not talking about society, she's talking about individuals, and she's concerned about you demeaning the individuals in the way that you're talking. And also the element of also the aesthetic that you communicated, like saying things like crazy and stuff. A lot of time, I think to like- Wait, saying things like crazy? Wait, I never called her crazy, no? Or said a rape victim was crazy. crazy. I can't remember what the specific <laughs> words were. I, I really okay. can't. Okay, well, that's kind of important. I'm saying like, oh, if, you, if you're traumatized by rape, you're crazy. That would be fucking insane for me to say, of course. Right. So it's not, it's not as simple as me saying, be nice. I'm not saying be nice. What I'm saying is, I think in the cases of trauma, you get into really dicey areas unless you're really precise about language, which is why when I said a lot of the same viewpoints that you have to Brittany, her and her audience could receive it, probably in part because I'm a woman with sexual assault history specifically, that already puts me on easier grounds because it immediately communicates an aesthetic to the audience of I understand you implicitly, right? Nobody is going to tell me that somebody who had like a sexual assault under two doesn't to some extent understand it, right? So I, I have that aesthetic already working for me. And then I was extremely precise in my language about using words like risk factors and protective factors, which in fairness, you just didn't have that language ammo, or at least you didn't use it at the time. Um, you were trying to communicate in that di direction. And I would agree, there should be a greater margin of error extended to you as well, because like these topics are spicy. Almost also be clear when you're saying, when you say greater margin of error, you mean, my me going above and beyond to protect another person that stumbled into a conversation that they didn't give adequate notice ahead of time was going to be triggering for them. This is what you mean when you say take greater care, right? No, when I'm saying extending, when I'm saying people need to extend you a greater margin of error, I'm oh. saying like just because you use imprecise language. Like well, sure, but I don't even think I'm, I don't think I'm, I don't think I said anything imprecisely. I think I just I didn't I wasn't talking like it was a therapy session. Sure. No, you gotta either agree or disagree with that. If you feel like I said something that was imprecise or incorrect, then say like, oh, like you said this, it was wrong. Or you said this and it's just not true. Do you think that I spoke like it was a therapy session? Yes. Well, how so specifically? Uh, because you were trying to take into account their personal history or something. You were trying to relate to them on an empathetic level. You were trying to make sure that their feelings were validated. You were trying to make sure that they felt like they weren't being attacked. That was your goal in that, which feels like a therapy session. Hi. Uh, hey. <laughs> Hi, Brittany. I just want to say for the record, I did not expect you in any way to treat me like anyone but a commenter and a content creator on your stream. Okay, but you came in to, the, to a conversation that was pretty heated, and now you like are saying it's like, oh, like he's dog whistling like conservative things about rapes, if you rape victims, feel blamed. No, and it's like, I'm saying just for the record, in case mm -hmm. you don't know, that's that's how it sounds, and now you are agreeing that the way you said things. Like, I don't know if you agree, but like, I'm just letting you know how they were heard. I don't need you to change the way you speak. Like you okay. can do exactly the way you're doing it. Sure. You were fine to me on that stream. I didn't feel in any way like you were rude to me on that stream. Okay, hold on. I, wait, 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 mm -hmm. hold on. I just want to go back to completely yeah. disagree with what you just said that I agree now that I don't agree that I said or did anything wrong at all. Okay, I no, don't agree I'm not with saying that. You, okay. No, no, you didn't do anything wrong. This is not an ethics question. I didn't think you ethically did anything wrong, but I did, I do think you are wrong to assume like sexually liberated women and conservative women, unless you're having a different discussion that I'm having, which is more individual. How do we impact our culture and our bubble? Not like laws, because I don't know anything about laws, right? I'm just talking about like, how do you go about your day doing X, Y, and Z after X, Y, and Z happens? And the way you were talking about it made it sound like they should get over it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I, just, and that's, take I from totally him, disagree. I completely disagree. Which is why disagree. I came on to talk to you about it. But then you okay. came on my stream and then you did say, that you have a perspective, which is your right and your opinion, that you believe that X group experiences less trauma than X group. Yes. Okay, so that doesn't, that's where uh, that we disagree. doesn't, hold on. There, that is a non sequitur to somebody ought to get over it. People can experience more or less trauma for a huge variety of reasons. Somebody might hear a, a, a TV turn on as a childhood, like before they get beaten every day. And now when they hear a TV turn on, they get freaked the fuck out and they expect like there's like a Pavlovian reaction. 
That yeah, doesn't mean they sure. deserve to get over it. Or they have to. That's you are extrapolating that based on things that other people have said. I've never leaned into that ever, and I've spoken plenty of times in the exact opposite. For sure, I just the reason I said that, and again, I'm happy to like reword myself. But you said, and I correct me if I'm wrong. Why can't a girl just go to a party and like get assaulted and the next day be like, oh shoot, like I guess he got one up on me. Like you said that you're, in it's interesting that they can't just move past it. Why do you think that is, right? Is that kind of the example you gave? Am I wrong? It's, it kind of is, but you're reading into it so incorrectly. When, well, then when, that's what when I, when I say, why can't somebody do this? You're phrasing it as like, why don't you just do this? My question is generally, why can't somebody do that? Because it yeah. seems like they can't. But when when I ask that question, implied in that question is that you can't do it. Whereas you're reading it in the slang sense of like, why don't you just get over that? When I'm asking, why can't somebody get over that? It's an, and it's an interesting question because there sure. are some things that we get over pretty well. Some things that may be even traumatizing, but it seems like we get over. And there are other things we don't get over really well. And I'm just curious why we don't get over some things. But you're hearing it as an attack when I don't think I've ever given any indication that I'm attacking rape victims or expecting them to get over it. No, I... Totally. I'm just letting you know that again, because even my chat's like, but that's what he said. He's literally saying it right now. So again, we can hear your perspective, but I need you to understand that it's it takes a lot of work to make sure that you don't mean the different tone. And so that's why I called to check in. And then I was like, okay. But I, I, again, you can do you. I'm just letting you know as from the experiences I've had, and again, anecdotally speaking, it I can't trust what you're saying because now I don't have any evidence that you would also, like I don't have enough evidence to counter that thought as a possible, like I, obviously you're a good person, bro. I don't think you're not a good person. I don't think you're gonna rape anyone, obviously, bro. Like I've been in your house. I would never think that. But that doesn't mean that the way you're communicating couldn't be improved upon to clarify your position without you like getting, like you're yelling right now. I'm but yelling I'm right who... now because I think I was incredibly clear. Kyla just repeated everything back to you verbatim that I said yesterday, and you agreed with all of it and pretended like it was substantively different than what I've said. And because now well... people have this impression, it was almost verbatim some of the things she was saying. With Like, she said that Yas Queen comment, and I think when I gave that exact thing, I think you pushed back hard against it, and you bought what she said 100%. It was the exact same thing that I said. That sometimes people can reinforce your trauma by Yas Queen you too hard, and it's probably not a good thing. When she said it, you agreed 100%, and you totally fought against me when I said it. And then you started repeating a lot of the things that I said, that, that the ways that people are raised in society and the way that people are told about things can influence how they are perceiving trauma or other trauma responses they have. Sorry, go ahead. I think, could I suggest that I think there's kind of two things that are occurring that keep causing like the, the missing of each other. I could be wrong. And if you want me to shut up, I'll just step out and said. Talk, girl, talk. In my view, I think there's kind of two things going on. I already said the aesthetic piece. I think Brittany probably unironically, I immediately communicate an aesthetic that's going to be you're going to take my words at my words and not at the possible implications of my words because i'm a sexual assault victim myself and i'm probably a woman so you're and i'm like somewhat mental health informed and therefore like i i talk like somebody who's in that world a lot so i in any ways in every way kind of communicate an aesthetic of like safe not trying to judge and empathetic to your situation whereas like i think in a lot of ways steven doesn't always communicate that aesthetic, but I think also is at a disadvantage for communicating that aesthetic as well. When I think like he's trying to, in many ways, I think he's like earned the rapport to be taken at his words um, and like clarified for like what his words are possibly implying if you're like not sure about it. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if that's fair though. Look, I don't think Steven is advocating for rape. Like that's not what I'm saying. And I do admit that I was actually like, I'm, I'm gonna call it a mini trigger the day I called you and I should have just waited a day, thought about it and called you now. Um, but now I've thought about it and I've waited a day and I've re-listened to the stream and I'm kind of feel like, yeah, it wasn't the best worded conversation and I think it could have happened differently, but you did feel extremely dismissive to yep. anyone who didn't agree to you, agree think, with you. Uh, because I'm looking for, I'm, because I need yes. real answers to yeah, questions that I have. You're talking like a policymaker, right? You're being really frank. And when you're using words, you're using very precise words. Like you're intentionally asking the questions in the way that you are, but you're not implying it in the way that some policymakers are implying when they say things like, why can't they just get over it? You're obviously not implying that. You're asking like, 
direct questions. But I think the issue is that when you give the aesthetic, especially as a man and sounding like a policymaker for people who've experienced that trauma, like that aesthetic is something that's really hard to get over. And I'm not saying that like they're right for not getting over it or that you're wrong for doing that. I'm just saying this is probably why the miscommunication happens. I don't think anyone is wrong in this situation. I mostly just think it's a miscommunication. Yeah, and also with policy making, just in this regard, if there is a policy be to be made, you kind of make it sound like sexually liberated people should get less of a focus. And that's why that's interesting to me because there doesn't seem to be anything that I understand that they don't need as much help you're, as anyone else. You're so hung up on the one example. No, that's okay. But, but, that's but hold okay. on, wait, but if, but if what I said is true, then they should get more of the focus. Yes. That's how we okay, treat these types of things. Fine. No, 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 I'm right. It's not just an opinion. People that are more negatively impacted by some things should get more of the focus than other people, right? If there are a group of people walking into the water and they can't swim, they should have more flotation devices than the ones that can. I don't like the right. idea that the saying of like, well, everything is the same and everybody's blah, blah, blah. And that is absolutely not true, especially when it comes to trauma. And the idea that all of this treated the same is because everybody can everything is not only wrong, it's like, unhealthy and dangerous because different people do respond differently to different things and it's important to be able to account for that that's why when somebody's diagnosed with like ptsd or cpsd they have to take an inventory they have to take an assessment it's not just you come in and say i'm traumatized and they're all treated the exact same okay so just to clarify if two people are raped before we help either we should see who got raped worse that i i i'm oh god hold on i'm he's, trying not to he's say talking at a, no! he's talking at a hold point. on i'm trying to answer this question without fucking going full nuclear okay what I'm saying is that if two people got raped when they're evaluated by a psychologist or a psychiatrist or therapist, whoever the fuck is evaluating them, there probably are predictive things that you're looking for to see what are more likely outcomes. So for instance, let's say two people come in and they both say that they got raped. And let's say one person says, yeah, I got raped. And also I got laid off by my job and I've had some suicidal ideation in the past. I don't feel bad right now. And I also have like depressive disorder, or whatever. That person, maybe the therapist looks at their notes or they do, they have their research. Program. These people are like 95% more likely to try to kill themselves after rape. Yes, that person would be treated differently. Yes, based yeah, on their okay. history and the I predictive agree. factors. I agree with that, but the, so I agree, but I, but Again. the way that I said it makes it sound like we should just tease people that got raped in our sluts and then take people seriously that are conservative. Brittany, that is the most insane reading of what I'm saying ever. Like, even the way you're phrasing it is like, so you're saying if two people come in and they got raped and one of them wore a crazy dress and the other one, uh, you know, wore a totally formal dress, that the person that was, you know, dressed more professionally should be taken more seriously. I'm not saying anything remotely close to that. Like, there's no world where I'm saying something like that. No, I know that. But did you go to your Reddit and read the posts and comments from your guys? Um, not yet. Because a lot of them were like, Destiny's right. Getting raped isn't as bad as getting beat up. And I was like, okay, guys, we can't be like playing the who got hurt more game when it's like every person's going to have a different relationship with their trauma. No. The point is, Sorry, I go finish. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, just so what I'm saying is, I understand that I was in my feelings. I'm fully admitting it when I initially called you. But now that I've had time to observe mm -hmm. and go on your Reddit and see what people are saying, there is a split in conversation. But ultimately, the way you're phrasing things, which is fine, you can do that, is going to sound confusing because it still sounds like you're like, I understand you want to build a hierarchy. But again, my focus is how do we help as many people as possible? And it doesn't matter who's sure. in line first. Help it, because, no, helping yeah. as many people as possible sometimes requires building a hierarchy, right? Absolutely, from a societal perspective. Wait, how can you keep saying, how can you keep agreeing with me when I'm saying the exact opposite of what you're saying? Because we're because talking about different talking about things. she's talking about individuals. She's talking so about trying, like her as an individual. Even as an individual, it would be the same. If I had two children and one came to me and their arm was chopped off and the other one had a paper cut, I'm triaging. I'm going to treat, like, like with the medical research I have, the one who's bleeding out of their body. Even on an individual okay. level, what I'm saying is true. I'll give you an example. My sister and I grew up in the same family because she was a straight A student and never caused trouble. Her, her like all her trauma was neglected because I was an, a loud child. I threw tantrums. I rebelled. My parents gave me all the attention. And then it wasn't until my sister hit her 20s that they were like, oh shit, we neglected one of our kids because we thought she was in less pain. And what I'm saying is just because it looks like they're in less pain doesn't mean they are, or maybe they're just in a different kind of extreme pain that's the same, but different. So I'm just more focused on not forgetting that even if trauma doesn't look traumatic, I get neglected all the time in different ways because I'm like so strong and stuff. People are like, Brittany doesn't need help. Brittany doesn't need help now that I'm older, but that doesn't mean I don't need help or people doesn't, don't need help. I'm just trying to be open and considerate of different personalities, different like ways people present themselves. And I'm totally fine with you doing you in your bubble in your world. 
I'm just letting you know as a friend, when I heard it, I was like, oh, that feels weird. And I don't think that's the Steven I know. And so now that we're getting clarifiers, I'm great with everything you're saying in this bubble for that solution, but it wouldn't work in mine because I'm focused on the individual, but I appreciate your efforts on a global, on a internet, no, national level. Is that okay? Like, I'm okay with your thoughts as long as you understand that like, it just wouldn't work for all people, just the people you're kind of focusing on. Sure, I just totally disagree. I think it would work for all people. Okay. I don't think you've said a single thing that contradicts anything I've said whatsoever. I don't it's, know why you think about, that, I don't think that some people can't have hidden either. trauma or that some people can't, I'm not saying we should ignore some people. Um, I think everything I'm saying applies on a, on a personal and on a societal level. Kyla, if you wanna tell me something I'm, you think I'm wrong about, go for it, come in, okay? It's not about you being wrong. It's not about me saying, I'm not saying, Destiny, it sounds like you're saying X, which is wrong. It's what it, what's really being communicated is Destiny, it sounds like you are somebody who would be saying X, right? Okay. Whereas when I'm speaking, it's like, I, I know I know you're laughing, but it's like, of course the way that like you yep. communicate these things are going to influence the way that like, especially audiences that aren't warm to you are going to like receive the words, right? I know it's silly. I know it should be like something that people don't care about, but you would agree that people only typically care about like the first two inches of, of like how people present. Sure. Yes, yeah, did that go through? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are we doing today, guys? <laughs> Good. I'm glad we're talking. I was really scared you weren't going to talk to me again when chat was like, he's not going to talk to her. And I was like, oh, no. Ready? I'll always talk to you, okay? Thanks. I appreciate it. I don't want to burn a bridge when this is a great example of how to, like, um, build, like, you know, mesh bubbles and build bridges. And, like, this is a great example of how are we both trying to help people in different ways? And then do we need to step on each other's toes or should we actually stay out of each other's business and help who we're helping? That's, okay. like, a great, I think, a question I'm thinking about. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, thanks for letting me uh, scream and wild out for a little bit, okay? Yeah, we love it. We love uh, We love it. <laughs> okay. Okay. We good? Yep. Be careful. Okay. Okay. Have a good day, guys. Yep. Okay, bye. Bye. Tell me what I'm wrong about. Am I wrong about anything? I think it I applies. Didn't you were, I, hold on. I have been saying from the very beginning, and your chat's going to fucking lose their brain. I am not saying you're saying something wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying that at okay. all. Okay. All right. A at all. The I just, I sound insensitive. You're, hold on. Yeah. You're, no, it's more important than that. Oh, okay. Not only are you right, but people need to be able to hear it. Okay. That's what matters here. You are correct. And it is fundamental that people hear this because this is something that you were correct about that society is failing in. The Yas queening shit is bad, right? And the dismissing people's right is bad. So we need as a society a more like, I don't know, just prop, not even more sophisticated, just a better way of how we're approaching these types of conversations. And the issue is in my mind, it's like an unironic, like I hate even having to do this, but it's like the main thing is that like on a topic like this, I think if you're not really mindful of the way that like you sound when you communicate it, you're going to fall on deaf ears. And I think like this is the exact advice that you would probably give me, for example, like when I go on Fresh and Fit, there are two ways that I can approach a conversation with them about like women, right? One way is going to communicate to them that I'm a feminazi who hates men. And another way is going to communicate, I understand your side, blah, 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 blah. Even though I'm saying the same shit. <clears throat> Because of course, how you sound matters. Like, of course they do. And anyone in chat. Okay, you know what? Are you like an listen. actual autism? Okay, like, I don't know what I'm Here, to say. are you ready? Are you bored? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Pay, can I pay you for work? Uh, possibly. Okay, I'm I will pay yes you until I know. verbal contract. I'll give you a hundred dollars. Okay, if you want to go through like twenty or thirty minutes of my video with Brittany, and can you tell me where I say something where it's like, oh, Steven, when you said this, it kind of sounds like you want women to get raped and you're blaming them for it. I want, can you, I want you to, can you do okay, that for I'm me? Never, I just I'm want never you to, going to I just want to hear, I just want to hear a part where I'm like, you should have phrased this I'm better or you should have, okay, I'm being hyperbolic. But like one you part where you're like, when you say something like this, it comes off like this. I'm just super curious because it, because it, the, sure. my perception of it, I'm going to kill you first. My perception of it is that there's a, it's a lot of like personal feelings and sensitivity on the other side that like, I don't think I can, I don't think I can um, uh, accommodate. I, I don't think I can reasonably accommodate in that conversation. I think the only answer would be to just not talk about these things. That's what it feels like. Sure. I, 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 sure. I will, you don't need to pay me. I will absolutely look through and see if there's anything. Uh, it's possible that I'm completely wrong and I'm just like, 
in my own feelings because of like Destiny's my friend, but it's it's not to me about like rhetoric or tone specifically. Well, what you're talking about right now is exactly rhetoric and tone. That's exactly what we're talking about. I'm not I'm not trying to talk about that. I'm well, I don't care what you're to trying to. That's what we're we're saying that like listen the type like we're it's literally a what is it ethos or pathos or whatever like the person that you are makes you harder to sympathize with when you're talking about these types of sexual assaults. Um, people have heard other things in the past from people that say these types of things. Therefore, they might mix up. So you need to be careful to like couch your language in as much understanding discourse as possible, or be aware of this, or make this concession. Blah blah blah. Like it's all like I'm not, and that's not rhetoric's not necessarily bad, but but that is fundamentally because if you're saying like oh well I think that you're correct about everything you're saying. They're just like for some reason people might misinterpret or whatever. Like that's feels like that's what we're right. talking about. Not that that's sure, bad. I'm not trying to. Yeah, I'm not sedging yeah. you. Yeah, it's not who you are. It's about some people not believing you're saying something that you're not. Right. It's about people reading into implications because you are talking like the way somebody who would be talking when they mean this. Sure. It's just about that, right? It's it's the it's the friend who acts like a persnickety old man when they're actually like super super kind. Sure. Um, this the, it's the part of my um, asshole, even though they're not. Yeah, it's, it's the I wrote. There was a small part of my huge Vosh anti Vosh manifesto where or anti what was it? I think it was a Vosh manifesto um, where I had written about that. There's a problem where we are so scared of certain conversations that just by saying certain things, when we get so obsessed with dog whistles, we like think that somebody's being like hardcore bigoted when they're not. ContraPoints gave an example of one of her videos where there was an image of a white lady holding a white child and it says we need to protect our future. And her first response was, holy shit, this is a Nazi ad. But it was just like some like fucking like homeless adoption shit or something, right? Because like we get like so hardcore into like, if you say anything or, but that I think that reinforces my earlier point where it feels like if you even ask the question of like, can our backgrounds mediate our trauma responses? That like, you're oh, you're blaming rape victims. I, like, I don't think that's fair. I think that's an insane reaction, but it's I think that's super normalized in society. Or like, do black people go to prison because they commit more crime? Like if you say that, it's like, oh my God, you're racist. You're a race realist. You hate, like, it's just like instant. And it's like, I, I think that that's a problem. That's like a bad thing. Yes, I would agree that it is a bad thing. Um, because people are so quick to like outhand dismiss. I, yeah, I and then the conversation that. can't even happen, right? Or like yes, maybe boys but, need more help in school. Like that's a conversation okay. we can't even have in society and it's horrible. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. But what would you say if, for example, I went on Fresh and Fit and in every way I said everything that I had said, but I said it in like, I communicated it with a very different aesthetic. So like rather than- I'd be than hypercritical phrasing, of you. Yeah, why? Because you're entering another domain where the expected behavior is gonna be far different. If right. I went onto so, a panel and the panel was like, this is a whole bunch of sexual assault survivors, let's talk. My conversation is going to be way fucking different than me talking to my stream about how I feel or, or about questions that I have about these things. I would never in my life go up to a rape victim and be like, do you think that maybe if you weren't such a prude about sex, you wouldn't have cared about getting raped so much? I would never say that in my life. That's an insane thing to say, right? Right. But if you were talking on your stream about something... I wouldn't be like, Kyla, when you say these things, uh, people like Fresh and Fit, they're going to think that you're being totally fucking crazy. Because I imagine you say, okay, yeah, well, I went on Fresh and Fit, I would act in a different way. But this is just me talking to my audience on my stream. Sorry, go ahead. Right. The issue is that, like, when we're talking about tone and rhetoric, it feels like an acute issue. I'm not really talking about an acute issue. I'm talking about like a chronic issue, like the whole general energy of like pick me, right? Mm -hmm. If I have a chronic aesthetic, so not acutely, but let's imagine I go into a feminist panel and I use all the right rhetoric and tone and everything. But when they go to my channel, they see constant shit that's very pick me energy, right? I have a chronic aesthetic now where even, even when I'm communicating in a different way, even if I'm using better tone and rhetoric and entering the domain, they're going to hear something different, right? I understand what you're saying. I asked a question of you last night when we were playing, I think, um, or when I was playing, sorry. Um, yeah. I asked you that question of, do you think it's possible to make yourself exist in a world of clips? Can, can you actually um, accommodate every 30 second section of your speech? And I think you reasonably said, no, you probably, it's probably not possible. I don't think I can present um, chronically I don't think I can present a character that will survive acutely every single situation I'm in. I think that the reality is, is there are going to be some hats that I wear where some people are going to see me and they're going to go, this motherfucker is insane. I saw Destin, he was the kindest, nicest person ever when he was talking about black women. And now here he is on a progressive panel saying, maybe we can't blame slavery for every single problem of the black community. I thought this guy loved black people. And now he sounds like a fucking conservative. That's just the reality of... Uh, of existing on all the different platforms. But I think that's gonna be true 
of every human being ever. It's just more out front when we're humans, right? The way that you would act with a boyfriend or girlfriend is going to be way different than how you'd act in church or how you'd act mm -hmm. in front of their parents or how you'd act in front of teachers or how you'd act in front of your children, right? Mm -hmm. Like if my child had access to me, 20, well, I guess I'm not a good example because I'm a streamer, so they do. But like imagine if your child had access to you 24-7. There would be a lot of stuff that you would, it would have a really hard time. Like, well, listen, like that's where all the like, well, sometimes when adults are doing this, like it's different, or sometimes adults don't mean the things they say. But like, it's impossible to exist in a chronic manner where every, where it would survive every single acute interaction, in my opinion. Sure. Yeah. So, are you hearing me say that I'm saying that you're doing something wrong or that you need to change something? Yes. Are you okay. not saying that? That is not. That's oh, not you're just I'm telling saying. me what's happening. I'm telling you what is happening. You can. Like, I'm just telling you what is happening. This is why people are coming away with this. Generally, you're chronic, like aesthetic, right? People don't think, for example, that you're a guy who flies out 20 girls every week and fucks them and like flies them home and ignores them for the rest of the like, because you don't give, you don't give that vibe to people. Even though you're rich, you're young, you're famous, you're charismatic, you're decently handsome, right? You just don't communicate that to anyone. No one would really think about that. I'm really not here trying to say, you need to change how you appear. It's just, all I'm saying is, in the conversation, for example, with Brittany, I get that she was coming into your space, but in a conversation where you've, people are already wondering about like how much of an asshole, how you're cold about things, then you're talking to a rape victim and you're asking questions that communicate an aesthetic that some people are not going to like be able to hear what you're actually saying and some people won't buy it. In that situation, if you wanted to counter that happening, you could juxtapose your current conversation against your general appearance. So in the general appearance, you appear cold, kind of like chill, um, you ask questions, but like you're like oftentimes, sometimes communicate like a disinterest and you're just like, you kind of like suss through things in a very like kind of like logical way, more exclusively, right? If that's like the general aesthetic that people have of you, if you're talking to a rape victim and you wanted to appear like somebody who wasn't saying X or Y or appearing in some sort of way, you could juxtapose it. You don't have to. I don't I don't care either way. I have heard what you said and I'm not judging you necessarily on your words, but I am saying that this is what's happening. Sure. I like I kind of understand what you're saying. Um I I I, I think uh... Cuz aesthetics is function. Like it's not aesthetics over function. It's not like anything. Like yeah, that. I, this is. And, this and I'm is, not telling this you this is. To be okay, I'll be selfish now, right now. Okay, because this plays into our conversation last night. I think I sure. need to make the ask. I I think the thing is, I would have a higher expectation of a friend. I guess that would be my thing. If I heard okay. Brittany saying something that sounded fucking wild, um, I would never go in and be like, "Oh, Brittany, it sounds like you fucking hate men." Right. So like yesterday, I could have said, um, "Brittany." I think you actually fucking hate men. The way that you played up the fight that your brother got in, you think it's cool that guys get jumped? Like, you don't see that men are the victims of violent crime like 10 times more than women? You don't see that men are, are getting locked in prison? Like, I could have gone down that road, but I don't think Britney thinks that, right? But she did say exactly the type of thing, a woman romanticizing male violence, that like would play perfectly into that like misandrist narrative. But I don't think Britney's that kind of person. I would never, I'm never gonna assume. If I really thought that, I might like shoot her a message and be like, you don't actually think that like, getting into fights is like the cool thing about being a guy or whatever, right? Like, but I, I don't think she does. I think that was just the way she was saying, sorry. So I guess I would just, I feel like if somebody comes on, especially a friend and is like, I think you sound like a conservative that is just telling women to get over rape. And it's like, what? That's just, it's just like such an unbelievable um, feeling of me. It's like getting misgendered, I guess. Like the, yeah. whatever exists of me in your mind is so fucking different than what I would have assumed you would have thought of me. That's just insane to me. But okay. I, that's, yeah. I guess that's just my feeling, I guess. Now I'm in my yeah, feelings, okay? <laughs> you're like, it, like, it's unfair. That's fine. Uh, you're like, like, it's unfair. Like you're kind of upset. Like, why would my friend take my words over my, like, why would you take my words or like the implications of what you think my words are over my obvious known intentions of mm -hmm. me as a person? I think that that's super fair. Thanks for fucking validating my fucking feelings, okay? Doesn't make me feel any better, but thanks. Okay. I know it doesn't you make me feel any better, sure. but I, I think like this is a different conversation and I think mm -hmm. that this is actually a really valuable conversation, right? Because I don't, I don't, if you're like, if we go back to the aesthetic one, if you're just saying, well, I can't do anything about the aesthetic, that's just is what it is and I don't really care, that's fine, right? But the second conversation is, I don't really like that my friend would assume something so like, like nasty of me when she should know better because she knows me. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a really important conversation. And in fact, like this is ex like this is an expressly important conversation. Like Nick and I have had this exact conversation in the past where like he was like I wish you could just like not just hear like my words and the possible implications of what it could sound like, mm -hmm. but that you would like take my words into context of who you know me to be. I think that's a very important conversation to have with somebody. Okay.
Anything else? I. Are you are you gonna make the ask? <laughs> probably not. Maybe I will. I don't know. I'll see. Well, it's public now, so I mean, she's probably aware that the asks exist. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe I think it's probably just around this one topic. I don't think it'll come up again, but. I mean, I think it's really fair to say, please stop treating me like a misogynistic asshole who would dismiss question, dismiss women and question rape victims. I think that that's a pretty fair ask and a good ask to make of your friends. True. Okay. I'll draft that up tonight. I'll see. <laughs> I feel sending it over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's going on? I'll just, yeah, I just need to, yeah, I need to do that. Yeah. Fulcrum. Say hi to Fulcrum. He's on YouTube chat. Hi, Fulcrum. Thank Where's you. Fulcrum? Fulcrum? He's the guy that sends us all to Yodi land. We all go and talk about sexual assault, I guess. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> anything right. else, Chief? What's that? What's the resistance? Are you gonna Are you gonna ask? I mean, I don't have to. I'm just curious about the like. Now that we've gotten to this point, it seems like you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Like it's like annoying, or like you're not that interested, and I'm curious. It just feels cringe. Okay. Cringe? Yeah. How so? It just it just does. It just feels cringe. Like to have like basically being like, oh damn, like part of this was like an feels like I should just get over it. That's what it feels like. Oh my gosh. It happens. I can be an asshole sometimes. Fuck it. What is a no path? But that <laughs> that's not how feelings work. <laughs> Emotions aren't cringe. <clears throat> they just are. They just exist. Yeah, but following them is the cringe part. That's why we go the way of the lone wolf. We just play no. Sigma male affirmations for twelve hours and we're fucking. Nah, good to that go. shit's cringe. That shit's cringe. Nah, like good wisdom. Nah, good wisdom nah. is taking logic and emotions and like incorporating them together to figure out the best direction forward. Emotions are based. Okay. Yeah, probably, yeah. I mean it's kind of the thing that powers our whole lives, huh? Yeah. Diffusing with humor is cringe, all right? <laughs> Me? <laughs> no shot. Mm. Toxic nah, man right now. nah, mm. no shot. Mm. Not me. I would never uh -oh. do that. Uh oh, Ooh, that Oof. sounds like someone has a problem confronting Oof. feelings and emotions and shit, and they just try to use humor to get out of it until the other person leaves the call. <laughs> been yeah, fun, sure Kyla. Does. See you. Talk to you later, buddy. <laughs> see you later. Okay. Bye. You leave you in your avoidance. Yep. See you later, Kyla. Have fun. Yeah, diffusing with humor is cool. for blue-haired piss true. babies. True. Absolutely true. Afraid of emotions. True. Yep. Yep. Bye. Yeah. Have fun. Okay. Bye. Have See fun you later. with your emotions. Bye. Bye. Absolutely fucking destroyed. Don't ever let her come back and think she can do anything, okay? But get annihilated on my stream. This is interesting because I've had this problem with other friends. Okay, hold on. I'll tell Kyla. Hi. Hey, let me mute you on my side. Hi. Okay. Okay, so I didn't watch m some of it, but I, I guess he was hurt that I was his friend. No, uh, that, sorry, specifically it sounds like, I mean, fuck, I really don't want to put words in people's mouths. I don't like being the middleman too much, but um, I think, <sighs> did you finish the, the Destiny stream? No, I stopped because like I once I felt like he was dismissing me like, oh, Brittany's too close to the subject. So I was like, OK, well, I don't I'll just talk to professionals, I guess. But let me tell you, I have this problem with friends where they're like, why aren't you giving me the benefit of the doubt? And I was like, no, no, I am. This is me giving you the benefit of the doubt. You want to see me when I don't give you the benefit of the doubt? I block you. Me right. giving you the benefit of the doubt. Because like I have friends and family that are not perfect people, Kyla. They do some pretty fucked up things. Yeah. But like they're still my friends and family. But yeah, I have to hold everyone in my life like, hey, just double checking. Are we pro-rape all of a sudden? Because, like, that shit happens. And so, like, again, I'm not thinking that of Steven at all. I'm mm -hmm. just saying that the way he talks encourages his audience to say some pretty shitty things to people of, who have been raped. So that I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. But, yeah, I've talked to Steven probably 20 times in my whole life. Right. And I would ask my mother a follow-up question of, like, hey, I'm just making sure. Are you going to torture children the way you tortured me as a child verbally and physically? Because, like, and I don't mean that. I mean that I'm being kind of hyperbolic because, like, compared to other kids, my life was great. Yeah. But that doesn't mean – you know what I'm saying? I don't trust anyone. My own partner and I, we double – we were like, hey, are you saying this or are you saying this? And, yes, because we love each other, we assume the best. And I do love Steven, so I'm assuming the best of him. But, you know. Yeah. I'd be curious – do you mind maybe watching like the last five minutes of that conversation just so that you fully hear the bit about the emotional piece specifically? Because I think there was a pretty big tone shift there. And then... Yeah. Are you uh, guys all hearing me though when I said I do admit I was PTSD triggered? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because I'm aware I'm I was in my you. fifis. Yeah. Yeah. 
Of course. Okay. That's why okay. I'm saying this is just a miscommunication. Like nobody did anything bad here. Re like really, truly. Like this is just like people, humans going to human, you know? Yeah, I really hope this isn't that big of a deal. Like, I hope we're having a normal discussion right now that's kind of heated since Stephen and I never have those. This yeah. is like a great, like, honestly, today, this is why I stream today, is I'm like, yeah, no big deal. We totally disagree. This is how I'm feeling. But, like, I'm not getting validated at all. And I am validating plenty of his ideas because I agree. So that's what I am concerned about. If He's my friend. Why yeah. isn't he validating even one ounce? Right. So that's fine. But, yeah, we can watch it if you'd like. But I'm embarrassed about it, girl. Uh, the the last bit, the emotional stuff? All of it. Like me talking to Steven the other day, you mean? Oh. Oh, wait. What are you talking about? Wait, why are you? Im I'm just saying the last five minutes of my conversation with Steven. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you meant the last five com five minutes of the conversation I had with him where I was emotional. No, 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 no. Oh, I totally, okay, sorry. I'm not emotional I'm talking... today. Like I'm yeah, not yeah, triggered no, at I know. all today. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's I mean, it. yeah, the last five minutes. And then I can fix up my water. But I'm listening. okay. Yeah, okay, let me pull it up. All right. So I'm guessing you heard the piss baby comment and stuff. The annihilated comment? And, uh, yeah, and me calling him a piss baby. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, yeah, I just called him a blue-haired piss baby. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so is that what you wanted me to watch? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you saw all of that context <sighs> first so that you knew the the struggle is real with the emotions. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I think I agree. So here's here's kind of what I'm hearing. You do this with anyone. It has no marker of closeness of friendship. That's what I'm hearing you say. Yes, And correct. I believe you because I know that you would ask me these questions. And I understand you in a way, especially like I understand you both logically and emotionally, that I would Thank be you. bothered. The problem is that I think for Steven, it feels different, especially because usually when his friends are asking him these types of questions it's right before they burn the bridge with him mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's what i suspect is part of what's going on i could be wrong i'm obviously mind reading steven a little bit and he's uh might fight me on the emotional front but what matters is that in this situation he couldn't he couldn't hear you emotionally um yeah and he couldn't tell you emotionally what was going on for him <clears throat> Yeah, because I don't want him to feel I, – I've had this problem with even my inner circle, right or die yeah. people, where yeah. they're like, hey, sometimes I just wish you'd be on my side. I was like, uh-uh, not after you've done that fucked up. I'm not going to be on nobody's side. Because, right. like, the thing is, is, like, I think we're all individuals living in a society. So, like, you can individually cheat, but I'm not right. going to condone your behavior, bro. Yeah. And that's what, like, I have some friends that, like, yeah, they, they're not the most, like, sometimes they do things. <laughs> right. And so my love is saying you can still be my friend and I love you, but that doesn't mean I'm going to fucking back down unless you negotiate a relationship where we don't talk about these things. Then cool. We'll just hang out and do bowling. Right. But yeah, I don't because I like Steven so much, but like, God, we don't even talk that much. <laughs> like, I don't know him yet. I'm still learning who he is. I can't wait to know him. But like, yeah, we don't I don't know about him, but like we don't talk very often. Right. So there's like so much more I need to know. I don't know anything about him other than what he shares on stream. That means everyone's his friend, right? Like I need, I want more I, if, if there's an expectation of, but see, even if I knew more, that doesn't mean anything to me. Cause like, yeah. So, okay. Makes sense. Oops. Are we disconnecting on, oh, you're putting on your camera. You're so pretty. Wait, now your mic is muted? Question mark. Better. Hello, testing. Yes, I hear you. I check, check, check. Okay. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I just put on eyebrows, so I'm good. To oh, go. I love that. Let me pull you on stream too, girly. Let me make sure I'm not going to dox anything. I'm so tech inept. Look, this conversation's dope because it also like puts into perspective, like from my perspective, it is emotional to use the you're my friend card. Mm. But in my head, I'm like, so? I can still be your friend and I'll visit you in prison, bros. But that doesn't mean I'm going to back off from like my personal moral-ish relationship I have with um, how I feel about these things. Does yeah. that make sense? I do. I guess in my head, I don't think, I wouldn't expect that if somebody individually, like you, I could be wrong. Yeah. I would never read Steven as somebody that if, say I went to him personally and privately and was like, hey, I just got sexually assaulted, blah, blah, blah. And I tell him the whole story. Maybe I don't even go to all the details. I don't think Steven would be the type where he'd sit down and be like, yeah, but like, did you try to fight them? Right, uh, right, right. You know, I I trust that Steven would respond with being like, okay, well, what what do we need? Like, 
cops? Do you need me to like, we, do you want me to drive you to the hospital? I would expect that reaction, right? Very empathetic right. and forward moving of like, how do I help you next? Right. So I think what he was hearing you say is that based on his words, you were assuming that he's the type of guy that individually would sit across a rape victim and be like, yeah, but what were you wearing? And he's like, of course, of course, I'm not that person. And he's like, you shouldn't have to know me that well to know that I'm obviously not that kind of person. Yeah. That's, I think, how he was feeling. Yeah. And so I guess like I have – the problem is like I talk to so many kinds of people. So when Steven says things like, no, that doesn't happen in any bubble, my brain just like short circuits because I'm like, what What does that mean? Right. What does it mean it doesn't happen in any bubble when I just told you it happens? <laughs> right. And so it's invalidating in a way that I'm like, so we're not agreeing on reality. So what do we do now? Do we agree mm -hmm. to disagree? Because like I don't – when I hear things, I go, yeah, that probably happened to somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that probably happens to somebody. You know, like Steven's examples were all valid because, yeah, that definitely happens to somebody. But I don't understand how he doesn't know in turn, of course, that – like. I wish I could bring my brother on. Maybe he'll let me do it. Maybe he'll come for an interview. But like genuinely, we all have different experiences with like our bodies and getting assaulted and getting jumped and getting into fights. And we all have a different relationship with it all over the world. So I right. just want there to be an openness and acceptance that like, hey, maybe we all don't know. And then that's great because then we can learn. But it has to start with being open to the idea that it happened in the first place. Right. Yeah, it's super interesting the way that you you and Steven kind of engage in like the relational stuff because you're kind of being like, well, I don't really know you that well. We've only talked 20 times. Do you think Steven feels like you know him pretty well? Uh, possibly? Which would be very strange, I think, from my perspective. I I agree. And I also think I understand why he would think that you know him quite well because you've been like, kind of closely involved in a number of like even like personal events in his life and stuff sure. like that. Yeah. Sure. Oh, you know what it feels like though? Mm -hmm. Okay. I I could be very close to someone very fast. Mm -hmm. But it takes a certain amount of requirements, like certain certain trust uh tests. And Stephen and I don't have to do any of those until now. This is our first one really mm -hmm. of like a real trust test. Of like, hey, I'm not burning the bridge with you, bro, but I'm letting you know that I cannot agree with this, like, premise, but I agree with, like, your ability to have it. And he's like, no, I am right. And I'm like, okay. Like, right. that's the thing, though. What's the – how is that different than talking to anyone else I've ever talked to my whole life who's decided right. that, like, again, I'm not right or wrong. I'm just saying no big deal. So I, I will admit that first and foremost, when I first came on that conversation, I was thinking completely individual. Mm -hmm. So that should fix that, and we shouldn't bring it up again. And now we should bring up today's conversation, which right. I th think should have gone better in some ways. Yeah. But that's the thing is like, because he was on edge that I might be like looking like just a new rape apologist video next podcast. He was on edge. And so he made me feel like, hey, do you not? Are we like fighting right now? What are we doing? So no big deal. I think it's easily fixed. We just talked about it. Hopefully we mm -hmm. just sit on it for a few days and we're good. But like the problem is, is that we are – both content creator. Like, I don't even think he watches any of my podcasts. He's never seen my levels video. He told me. So mm -hmm. I don't know how much of me he even understands the way I think, the way, the why I bring up subjects I do. Like, we could have had a great conversation about right. this because individual and society, like, what is society except a group of individuals? Right. Right. I mean, I, I definitely think that he respects you, I think, a fair bit. For sure. I think he even, I think yesterday him and I were talking about how he trusts you a lot to the yeah. level that he's like, maybe I like put her on a pedestal, like, idealize like Brittany and like my friends sometimes. And so I suspect I could be wrong. I'm going to be mind reading him. So that means I am obviously putting words in his mouth so he can sure. fully disagree with anything that I'm saying. But when I try to put myself kind of in that space, in the space of somebody who has been like basically backstabbed by everyone mm. that he's been close to, um, he's been assumed the worst of, despite mm. being really considerate of people and despite like he, he, cause he, he communicates as a setting of like a disinterested kind of cold person. And yet he's incredibly considerate. He's very, very generous. He opens his home to people. Um, and but he, he isn't like, perfect, right, Kyla? No, no, of course not. So he has tons of flaws. That's as well. the problem is like we all have flaws. He is those things, but he's also not those things because mm -hmm. we're not perfect. Right. So I've heard him talk a lot about sexual assault and a lot of not believing victims, which is fine. I also probably don't believe most of the stories he brings up as well. Right. But the way we approach it, 
I have the benefit of coming from a compassion first. He has a benefit of coming idea first, which right. of course is going to be colder. Mm -hmm. So he needs to understand that's fine. But it is interesting that he is willing to die on that hill because it doesn't allow enough people to hear him. So that's fine. I love that. I'm niche too. So I want him to know as a friend, I love him and I adore him. Do I trust him with what is the question? Hmm. I definitely trust him not to rape me. Would I let him babysit my kids? No. He's even watch his. <laughs> so like, no. Like, would I trust him with X, Y, and Z? Like, it depends. Same with my father. Same with my mother. Would I trust my mother to watch my kids? No. Hmm. Because she's going to indoctrinate them with religious talk. Mm -hmm. Would mm -hmm. I trust Destiny? I don't know what he lets his kid do. If he lets him watch The Simpsons? No. So again, I trust him, but with what? Right. That's super fair. And this is kind of like a big trust test, like you said, for yourself right now. Mm-hmm. Of like, how is he going to respond? Can he see you in, in the midst of this? It sounds right. like you're basically saying like, I think you said it well at the beginning where you're like, okay, I'm hearing sort of like the emotional needs he has, right? That he felt unfairly seen, that he felt like, why would you assume really negative characterizations of me? Why would you at least sound like you're assuming that based mm. on how you're describing me mm. when you know, you might not know who I am perfectly, but I think he probably feels that you know him pretty well. Mm. Um, Cause I think he feels like he's very honest with people. I suspect I could be wrong, but it's more like, on everything you've seen, is there any inclination I've given you that I would be this type of person, right? On the flip side, there's also like kind of an ask there for you, it sounds like as well. Um, trying to think about how to put into words what that is. Now, Stephen and I also haven't negotiated our friendship, P.S. Mm. So we're still winging it. We have not put down boundaries. I have not had a one-on-one -on -one with him where we discuss it. He doesn't seem that interested in having like a very, in my, my bubble version of a close friendship. But in his yeah. bubble might be a close friendship. But in my yeah. bubble, it's very superficial and fun. Right. I go to and your I, house. I hang out. Blah, blah, blah. But like he's not going to meet my parents, is he? Right. And is I he ever going to – yeah. I suspect though that your like acquaintance fun friend is like pretty pretty much like upwards of the top like closest that it gets. Uh, mm. Excluding like being his wife essentially. Um, <laughs> yeah, which is fair. And by the yeah. way, I am the oddball here. I am the weirdo because I cannot define friends to save my life. <laughs> because again, like, what is a friend? Is it just someone I know? Is it my neighbors call me friends? I'm like, yeah, we're friends. But like, are we friends? You're 60, 70, 90. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone's a friend. Like, you and I, do you think I know you very intimately and closely? Um, I think you have the capacity to more so. Like, I For can sure. tell that you're somebody who's willing to see me complexly. Do you know me super intimately? Like, no, we haven't spent nearly enough time for you to be there, but I would trust you a person that like, if we did spend that time, you'd probably get there for sure. For sure. So That's my how I see you. Yeah. I don't want to assume it either. What if I came on here and just, guys, I know Steven so well. We're very close <laughs> friends. And then I said something that was bullshit because we're not. Like, yes, we're friends. I hope I, I would, I'm open to some sort of closeness though. My inner circle is pretty closed. So I don't even want to be that vulnerable with anyone else. I have too many people I'm already vulnerable with. Right. So I myself have the limitation, but that doesn't mean we can't be close friends. That doesn't mean I can't be f have fun with him. But again, that takes a lot of intimacy and work. And we have not had that opportunity. Right. I've physically met him once and I don't talk. I haven't talked to him privately in like six months. Right. Yeah. So what does that mean? Right. Exactly. And I think yeah. this is the tricky thing is like, I mean, I've said this to him openly, like he is like he said <laughs> that he needs to work on being better at like stating boundaries and like voicing needs yeah um because because it clears things up but i also suspect mm. that he's like terrified of doing that right for um, sure he's always wondering if he even has a right to ask that it's not like fair enough uh and for him um yeah i i, I suspect that for him boundaries i could be wrong i'm gonna mind read again but it, like it's <laughs> it's basically asking him to navigate a whole bunch of uncomfortable stuff which is boundaries asking for needs and that he's going to have to think about it all the time when he's just asking for nothing at all, except he is asking for one thing. He just assumes everyone would know what it is, which is don't assume the worst of me, please. Because that's yeah. what everyone's always done to me. And I'm not that bad of a guy. I think that's like his one ask that he really needs to make to people. Um, yeah. Would you call yeah. that trauma that he has to work on? Mm. I'm not sure I'll use the big T word. <laughs> big That's my word. concern is yeah. like, I can't trust somebody who won't admit out loud that they're struggling. So I can't go on that journey with them. Yep. 
So I like that's my boundary of like, hey, figure it out. You're an adult who says you're the smartest person on the internet. Figure it the fuck right. out. Because right. my issue is like I I have an ego, but I also did a lot of fucking work to get here. Mm-hmm. So the issue is like I'm and I can't be his inner circle. So I actually can't be his 2 a.m. call. Right. Because I'm closed and I have boundaries around that. So I mm-hmm. want to be a good friend to him. But I I hope – God, I'm trying to think of what did I say. I don't remember thinking he's a very bad person when I called him. I remember just being concerned about the way he was talking. But I don't remember thinking to myself like he's a bad person. Right. I think the problem is that for him, you communicated like it wasn't really about what you were doing. It was that like it felt like you were saying he's kind of a misogynistic piece of shit who might like completely dismiss victims. So like maybe he wouldn't dismiss you, but he will dismiss almost all rape victims, right? That he doesn't care about women's experience with like sexual assault and that he's like misogynistic in that way. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying for the record. Right. The issue is like that's how it felt. And for you, Fair. on vice versa, what you were getting is, I, he, he literally wasn't saying we should dismiss rape. We of should course. say that these people less tra- like are less traumatized or all these things. He was literally just trying to say things like, like, he was asking specific questions. But for you, it felt like mm. he was giving off the guise of like, this feels like you could be dismissing people. This feels yeah. like a lot of victims are going to hear your words and be upset. And that isn't but something that, that but, I'm But even more than that, Kyla, we fundamentally do disagree on something though. Because I don't care how he talks. Because I talk like that. People tell me all the time, you're invalidating rape rape victims, Brittany, by the way you talk. I don't need him to change how he talks. I want him to consider what it, like, if he just reads his own Reddit, like, he'll get an idea of how his own audience is hearing him. Right. But if he agrees with his audience and he is saying what he means to say, then we just fundamentally disagree on the importance of why rape is traumatizing. Right. And Do you I get think, what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the issue is like he doesn't agree with his audience. He basically doesn't usually like tone police them. <laughs> he's genuinely, from my understanding, trying to figure it out. Yeah. He's trying to figure it out because he thinks society is doing a bad job. And he probably respects and trusts you enough to have a much more like nuanced, complex understanding of sexual assault and trauma in general. And he is trying for himself to tease it apart in that conversation and so when he's asking questions that sound bad yeah i I think he's like hoping that you'll hear it for just the words that was yeah but i but the thing is is like i even in this conversation now did i not hear him and did he not clarify and do i still not disagree am i not allowed to disagree with my friend without being attacking him no of course you're allowed to disagree okay because i want to clarify like i do disagree fundamentally Yes. Like sexually liberated women are going to have a different experience. I mean, it is a different experience because every individual will have a different experience. Right. But I don't think you could lump some. And again, are we talking about America? Are we talking about Europe? Are we talking about the Middle East? Are we talking about... Because again, for me, I am so aware of all the bubbles. There's no way we're having universal experiences outside of like loving and dying and caring and sacrificing and stuff like that. So when he says, no, there is a general consensus, well, how would we have that? Who are we asking? Are we asking the world? Oh, I think you cut out there. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm here now. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So when he asks, like, yes, we can generalize things, um, I don't actually agree with that. I think we can generalize certain things to some extent. Like, all gay people sleep with the same sex partners, but some mm-hmm. don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but, like, what does that mean? And also, it does cast judgment. Mm-hmm. So again, I'm I'm open to exploring. I want to throw shit at the wall. Um, I hope we can do that in the future. But even right now, why didn't why can we do it today? Do you think? I think because two things. I think he wasn't able. So there's a couple things. He doesn't really care about the aesthetic itself. Like he's like, but everything that I'm saying is fair, right? He's like, mm-hmm. he basically said, but Kyla just said everything that I just said, and you agreed with me. So he's like, yeah. so we, we don't disagree, mm-hmm. essentially. And then there's another piece which is. I think it hurt my I think it hurt my feelings that when I was saying basically more or less what was Kyle was saying, maybe not in like the most uh therapy sensitive way necessarily, like whatever he would use the language there. Mm-hmm. It kind of hurt my feelings that Brittany would take my words and assume like the worst of my character. Not mm. not that you disagree with his ideas, that we'd assume the worst. Did I ever thing of his I feel character. like I didn't insinuate that at all. Like zero, even in my even when I was upset the other day, and even like maybe my audience and I are hearing something different because I asked for their feedback. They're like, "No, dude, you were so sound. Like, yeah, you were a little upset, but like you've never talked about his character." So then, uh, I don't know. yeah, this is the issue. It's not really. This is the problem with Fifi's though. It's like yeah. it's never really about what you do because like okay. 
you were all you weren't trying to attack his character and he felt like you were and he wasn't mm. trying to dismiss rape victims but it felt like he was right like both like both of these yeah. things were occurring at the same time okay. it wasn't really about what either of you were doing it's about how both of you were feeling in this situation so now that we've like talked it out is that good can we like tomorrow be chill or no is there still <laughs> going to be like some work we have to get done because the problem is i'm coming to the i'm coming to it like cool we just we just finished it that finished right. the whole conversation this should not come up again because in my head, we just logic it out. But if he still has things to deal with emotionally, like that to me feels above my pay grade. Or at least I think it's above your pay grade for like hand holding and leading it. I think like if he still has stuff that he's dealing with, I think it would be completely fair, for example, for him to be like, hey, like this is why it hurt me. Totally. I just like felt this sort of way. I'm sure you'd be willing to be like, okay, understood. Not at all how I feel about your character. Yeah. Not what I was trying to imply. Really Absolutely. sorry I made you feel that way. I suspect... I hope I could be wrong. I don't want to predict anything because emotion, <laughs> emotion land with Steven is a wild ride, but yeah, I would hope that that would be enough, but I would agree that it would be at this point on him to probably spearhead the conversation. Um, if you want to, like, if you want to address the elephant in the room. Oh, I'll definitely like, like message him and be like, yo, in private, if you want to talk, let's talk, bro. But in my head, we just solve the problem. If this is the problem. Cool. All right, cool. My bad. You're bad. Cool. Move on. No biggie. Because yeah. if yeah. it's miscommunication, then like, great, then we just communicated. But if there's fifis involved that include trauma or coping, I can't help with that. That's therapy stuff. Yes. yes. You know? So like, I'm more than happy. Of course, I'll reach out. Boo Boo can talk to me anytime. I, he, has, he doesn't have my number. Nobody has my number. But he can, mm -hmm. you know, we can talk on Discord for sure. And mm -hmm. that's what I want. Ultimately, I want this to be proof of why the world is so chaotic. Because look how hard it is to just communicate. Which exactly. is why, like, I don't tackle societal problems because it's like, uh, do you want me to tackle everyone's trauma and everyone's culture and everyone's belief system? I just can't. I have to know what bubble you're in. What are we talking about? What is our goal? So that was my bad. Um, the initial, initial conversation I had with him the other day, like, yeah. absolutely. I hope he doesn't hold that against me. I'm certainly in. I love this conversation. I have made podcasts about my rape. I've talked about the nuance of it. Maybe it was my fault. Maybe I did it to myself. Maybe I wanted it. Yeah. And I've wanted to have these conversations with people, but no one knows how to do it without making it political, which is why I don't like talking about society. Because then it becomes, cool, how can we make this legislation? I'm like, whoa, can't we just talk about <laughs> the nuance of the experience without putting anything into law? Like, I don't want to yeah. ruin people's lives because I had a moment. Right. But that's yeah. like, that's what Stephen always wants to talk about is like society, law, institutions. Mm -hmm. Like that's politics in like institutional politics is like his, kind of his grub. He's always thinking about that. <laughs> Yeah. Now I will say like, down. yeah. And I, I, I'm obviously we're public figures around the internet. I don't think Steven is a bad person. That is right. not what my brain is doing. My brain is just yeah. thinking, Hey, do you have a bad idea? I want to poke it. And right. I'm, I'm feeling emotionally affected by your bad opinion, but also give my, give me a few days. I'll come back. Yeah. And then I'll come back as many times as it takes. But obviously there was just like, again, the ranking of rape is like, I can do that too. But like, okay, can I, I want to say something to you, please. If it's uncomfortable, don't say it out loud. Or, don't, or just let me know. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play this game because then we have to have that conversation of like, well, Kyla doesn't even remember her rape. So right. so she had it better. Or maybe right. she had it worse because she didn't remember. Like that happened to <clears throat> friends of mine where they were like, oh my God, do I not matter because I don't even remember mine? I was like, no, what? And then people were like arguing about whether or not like my rape counted or who's rape. And I'm like, stop. Everyone experiences it differently. That's right. okay. Let's talk about it. But of course... Again, we're talking about penetrative rape versus molestation because I don't want to speak like I've been molested because that's not what happened. I was not right. molested. Right. And so my my friends or family who were, they have very visceral reactions to molestation that mm -hmm. I can't relate to. Right. So, yes, you can create a hierarchy of who had it worse, but it doesn't matter because in the brain of that person, it's just as bad. Right. Yeah. So like, and I think Stephen agrees with that. Like, I think yeah. at the individual Does level, he? Like, okay. no, of course. Yeah. I mean, I talked to him about the limbic system, and he's like, "Yeah, okay. no, I get yeah, this. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I agree with all of this." He's saying at an institutional level, we must, we must differentiate these things. This is how like criminal charges work. So how do we do that properly? Because society also responds with social consequences, right? Mm -hmm. Do we give the same social consequence to like an eight-year-old boy who touches the breast of another girl? versus a 10 year old boy versus yeah. a 20 year old yeah. man right what about Ooh. a 20 year old man who does that but is disabled right what kind of social consequences specifically not just criminal mm. but like how do we respond to that man as an individual ah, do you want to know my solution which no one's gonna like do nothing until you have to do something <laughs> because yeah. when you move too fast you fuck up when you move too slow you fuck up so do nothing until you have to do something 
Yes. Which I is mean, not this is, an answer, right? Yes. This is why like intersectionality and the nuance of it is mm. such a good idea. And it is a bar that is so high that we might not be able to ever really attain it. Mm-hmm. Because how, how do we as a society at like the unsophisticated level of like an entire macro society yep. respond to the nuance of like, well, what's worse? My case where like I was penetra- mm-hmm. penetrated, but like, I don't remember it. And he was disabled. Is that like not as bad as like something else? Like, how do we deal with that? Like, there, how do we even compare these factors? It's really Oof. hard to do it, you know? Do you know, do you know who Bobby Lee is? Yes. He's a comedian. He talks about his molestation all the time. He's like, oh, it was done by like a Down syndrome kid. A retard molested me. And I'm like, whoa. And like, it's a very controversial take. But he's like, yeah, fucking like that. He talks about it. And like, what are we supposed to do? Put Throw the yeah. Down syndrome person in prison? And right. like, maybe because some Down syndrome people are more than capable. They have jobs and houses and they're like everybody else. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm very lenient. So my whole thing is like, I give more leniency to people who have problems and people who don't have problems. But then I think everyone kind of has problems. Yeah. <laughs> So I tend to give leniency, I think, to most people. But if you go on the internet or you go on your social media or you go to your family and go, I'm smart, I'm capable, I'm not damaged, well, then I'm going to yeah. hold you to the standard that is so absurd, you're not even going to meet it because you know secretly you're working on stuff. Yeah. Right? And then yeah. that's the problem is like, again, if that's like your thing, if you're like Tucker Carlson and everything you say is gold and all that stuff, that's fine. If you're Andrew, if you're Andrew freaking Tate and you get to get away with anything you want because... But, like, that's what I'm saying is, like, hey, we need to have clear conversations about these, like, these nuanced subjects. But also, some things might happen. Like, I've known people who are raped and molested, and they never turned in their predator or or whatever you want to call them, abuser. But they actually made kind of amends with them but kept a distance. Hmm. That never needed a legal system. That's why my work is predicated on, like, what if the legal system wasn't there to save you? Hmm. Because Mm -hmm. most of the time, most of us don't report our rapes. Right. Most of us have to deal with it on our own. Right. So, yeah, I love Stephen's conversation. I hope he keeps having it. I just he's right. If in an intellectual way, I can't engage with societal conversations, um, but it's not because I'm emotional. It's because right. I literally don't think it matters. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think and it I matters, think the main reason he assumed I just don't that. Think, yeah. Is because he he it felt like to him you were questioning his character, but I For think sure. he trusts you enough to know that you wouldn't. Yeah. So I think the only reason he could make these two experiences, which is feeling like his character's under question, right, and knowing who he thinks you to be, I think the only bridge that he could gap that with was maybe she's just too close to this situation, so For she sure. can't see me. That's clearly. fair. I think that so fair. that I genuinely think was him attempting yeah. to extend. And I was the was first day. I will fully openly admit I was the first day too close to it. Right. And then I thought bad, I was bad. I felt so bad about myself and about him. And I was like, oh no, like I misunderstood. But then I kept reading it and watching it. And then I was like, of course my discourse started talking about it and they were like a little upset. And then his Reddit was confused and his like, so that's what I'm saying. I think there was a clear miscommunication and I'm good with that. And that's mm-hmm. fine. And like looking, moving forward, I can't wait for us to have this conversation with a professional girl. Like I am, just, <laughs> I pray to God, I am a big enough YouTuber to get their attention. <laughs> I, I mean, most psychologists are, um, you know, who's, if you're going to, as somebody, I've been in trauma literature for a really long time. So I'm Tell a me. big fan of interesting. If you can get John. Okay. So there's, I'm going to make sure I confirm their names. Okay. There's mm-hmm. one guy at Berkeley and mm-hmm. then there's a lady at UBC trauma. Hold on. Okay. She might be easier to get just because she's not as famous as he is. Hmm. Oh, what's her name? Dang it, it's not coming out. I'll send it to you. I'll send you okay, a name. Please I bet you they'll come on because a lot of psychologists are starting to be like, we should probably go to social media more and like talk that about That would be stuff, so, so good. Wouldn't that clear? Because no offense, and I'm, I'm going to say this and it's going to sound so offensive. Who the fuck are in my or Steven to talk about right. these things from a, right. like a really, like accept a personal or individual way? Because like right. we're not in politics directly. We're not working in systems. We literally work from home in our bedrooms and we never have to touch grass. Right. So we're like, we, when we do, it's purposeful and with intention, but that's my concern is like, I don't know if Steven sees himself as somebody who's like of the world when like Mm -hmm. I see him as a chronic, like online person. Right. So that's the, maybe that's a part of the problem is like, yeah. Okay. So, okay. I'm very excited. Please send me those names. Absolutely. I will. will. Yeah. And like, yes. Cause this, the whole point of my work is to say like, Hey, we're always going to have problems with communication if we don't acknowledge we're having different lived experiences right. in a real way. And also there are liars. There are fakes. There are people crying on TikTok right now for your money who have never been raped or assaulted, but are saying they have. Right. Yep. And that's just the reality of life. Humans lie. It's not personal. Yeah. It's human. Yeah. 
You know, I hate to say it, but even my own siblings, some of them have trouble sometimes admitting to the truth. But you yeah. know what? What are you going to do? Yeah. Except love that person through their silly little guys <laughs> and then remind them that, like, I'm here when you're done. Whatever yes. you're doing. Molting. <laughs> yeah. Molting. Yeah. Molting, yeah. whatever. I love – look, I – I love this conversation and I'm so grateful for your input and, and friendship because you do see m the parts of me that are necessary to not write me off as like, just like girl or like crazy borderline. <laughs> like I'm reading Marsha Linehan's book on her journey. Yes. So it's good. so relatable, dude. But like, yeah. honestly, it is, it, it almost triggers my borderline a little bit. Cause I'm like, Oh, I remember this. I remember this. I remember this. And it's so scary when the world just tells you like, it doesn't matter how hard you've worked, Brittany. It doesn't matter that you've overcome all these things. You're still just a sick girl. Right. You're still yeah. just the traumatized girl, which fucking sucks. Cause man, it's kind of true. Like I'll always be working and I don't know for how much longer I'll be working on my problems, but man, at least, at least I know I'm working on them. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I agree that that's true. I think like, Maybe you're like the traumatized girl and the broken girl, but it's like the amount of like self growth required to be where you are now, despite all those obstacles, in many ways, like does put you ahead of like a large portion of the population. I'm in maintenance as as, like, mode though. I'm always in maintenance mode, right? Yep. Like I am, yep. you're right. I've done all the therapy, I've done all those points. I am, you're right, but I am in always maintenance mode. Every day yep. is a check in, drink your water, eat your food, do your DBT steps, really think about being conscientious today. And yep. then, yes, like honestly, I think that's why I also am getting down on myself a little bit where I'm like, man, I. I should have talked to him a couple days later. Yeah. I should I mean, have. I wouldn't beat yourself up too much. I think like, especially when you communicate that, of being like, hey, this was wrong of me. I don't know. I feel like this is why like, as much as like Steven's like, emotions are cringe. I'm like, they're the only thing that matter because like mm. the moment you like clear up the emotional stuff, it's like all of a sudden nothing else even mattered anyway. Yeah. Like we were never mad about the other shit. We yeah. were only mad because like we weren't seeing each other emotionally. Right. And by and the I way, I'll like, oh, yeah. go ahead. Please, please, please finish your thought. I just think it, I think it's like human. I don't think it's the end of the world. I think like, I think like Steven mm. needs to learn how to make asks, like emotional asks mm. of like, hey, like it would have been better if he was able also to stop the conversation and be like, hey, just, you know, like I was just trying to talk about this with my community. I wasn't trying to like say anything crazy. And it's upsetting me that it, it feels to me like you're like assuming something really awful about my character. Like yeah. that probably would yeah. have cleared up the conversation too. Just like it probably would have cleared up the conversation if you came in and you're like, hey, just, you know, I'm in my fifis. It's like, mm, yeah, both are true. But both are – you're both human. Yeah. Like, it's So it's true. Totally Humans fine. are going to be human, starting with me. <laughs> yep. Starting with you. <gasps> starting with me. Yeah. I Yeah. Okay. I really, like – I feel really good about the way today went. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. It was hard, but now I feel, like, super relieved because, like, I don't want him to think I'm burning a bridge. Right. Yeah. I No, I don't want that at all. Like, I don't God. think he does either. I think that's part of why he's so upset because I think he's genuinely – probably worried about that he's probably worried that he's gonna get backstabbed again and Never, i suspect that no. he doesn't really want to lose your friendship um, yeah no i don't want to lose his either okay i'm glad we communicated and i'm glad you were here to help do you think there's anything else moving forward we can do other than reaching out to professionals having more discourse maybe doing a panel of like how people have moved through their experiences i wish sometimes i do wish i went to college <laughs> for moments like this so i could get validated and like you know what i mean but like the thing is i didn't this is my lived experience and this is what i've done with my life I mean, to be honest, like when it comes to things like trauma, like, yeah, experts are really nice, but like experts are experts just because they've like read papers. Like you can read yeah. papers too. So like if you want to do more discourse on it specifically, you can just like read some more like research on it specifically. Yeah. It's always good to have those like on the tip. But And experts aren't always perfect, right? Because they're biased. I mean, I look at Jordan Peterson sometimes. I'm like, eh, that feels a little uh, fifi. Yeah. So like, there's a whole branch in the trauma field that is like. Uh, I don't know how I feel. About Literally, it. The, I know some psychologist. I don't know what his name is on YouTube. Uh, Destiny covered him the other day, but he's so Freudian in his ideas that he's like, all yeah. gay men just want to fuck their moms. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, everyone slow down. <laughs> like, yeah. there's just like a lot of that that I don't want to hear. But that's the thing. If I reach out to certain people, am I just reaching out to hear something I want validated? Right. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> all right, girly. All right. Anything else okay. on your noggin today? No, I think that's that's it. I'm glad I'm glad we came to a peaceable solution, and hopefully, uh, Stephen can give voice to his Phoebe's for if sure. Needed, I'm sure he will. I good. have faith in him. He's gotten Good. this far before, you know, and he'll do it again. He'll get further. I right. think he will. Oh my god, <sighs> guys. <laughs>